against Illinois. The Purdue Boilermakers coming in after a lopsided victory over Northwestern, but it's not quite the same today. We have had rain falling throughout the morning, and it is coming down rather hard now. Could be a factor in this one. I think it will be a factor, Larry. Uh, it just comes down to whether or not Purdue is the type of team that can move the football in wet weather. Some quarterbacks do not like to handle the football nor throw it in wet weather. We'll have to see whether or not Jim Everett, their outstanding uh, pass thrower, has that ability. Everett, of course, is leading just about everything that could be led in the passing circles at Purdue. He's going to set all kinds of records, and uh, he's a guy that has been very consistent for this team. He's been very consistent, and you know of all the Big Ten quarterbacks, we talk about the Chuck Longs and the Jack Trudeaus from Illinois. This guy has been rated by Gil Brandt as the number one quarterback uh, in the country and the number one quarterback probably to be picked in the NFL next year. Now, he has a lot of very fine receivers. He'll throw to just about anybody on the ball club. But the follow that he hits most often is a guy by the name of Rodney Carter. Carter is their tailback, and he likes to come out of the backfield and catch the football. He's second in the nation in receiving and obviously first in the Big Ten. So you'll see him uh, receiving the ball quite a bit this afternoon, I'm sure. Well, Michigan has played just sensational defensive football all season long. You can name a whole bunch of guys if you want to. Uh, as stars on the defensive unit, but Mike Hammerstein has just had a great year. He's been very consistent. Uh, as you know, this past week he was uh, nominated for the Lombardi Award, and I think there's only like 12 other players that get that uh, opportunity to uh, be nominated. So uh, Mike's having an outstanding year. He leads the team, or he's second in the team in uh, quarterback sacks uh, with six, and I think he's got like 18 tackles for losses. So he'll cause a lot of problems for Jim Everett today. The one area that the Wolverines have really not been consistent in is the offense. The Wolverines have had problems moving the football from time to time. A guy that's done a very consistent job, however, and hasn't gotten much notoriety is Clay Miller in that offensive line. And consistent is the right word. He is their only guy in that offensive line to start every football game for the Michigan Wolverines the last two years. He's an outstanding player, stands about 6'4", very strong, very quick. And the most important thing, I think, he was second string on the All-American, all, -Amer all academic academic All-American team last year, so he's very smart. Yeah, it's sometimes the academics are overlooked in this great game of college football, but there are a lot of very fine players on this Michigan team that have the high academic standards. That well, should be a great football game. Purdue and Michigan coming up next on Pro-Am Sports. Please stay with us. <laughs> ben, you were talking earlier about the possibility of the rain being a factor in this game. How about the surface itself here? Is it a good surface to cut on when it's damp? It's very good, uh, Larry, to cut on, but uh, the other thing is they had to tarp on the uh, on the field right up until pr probably an hour before the teams even arrived here today. So it's uh, primarily still a wet, I mean a dry surface in terms of uh, running and cutting out on the field. So I don't expect to see anybody really slipping uh, particularly in the first half as opposed to maybe the second half if, if it continues to rain the way it is right now. You played under rainy conditions. Did you alter or does a quarterback alter anything under these types of conditions? I just didn't like to handle the wet ball. It used to uh, psychologically affect me in terms of having to handle it all the time and it, it was just a mental problem for me. I didn't, I didn't enjoy playing when it was wet at all. Purdue has won the toss of the coin and is elected to receive Rick Sutkowitz will be booting the ball for the University of Michigan and the deep man for the Boilers will be Ray Wallace and Rod Woodson. Here are the officials, John Neyland's crew working today with Pickens, Baltz, Marisich, Pulls, Fortin, and Nevin operating with him. Rod Woodson wears number 26, Ray Wallace number 43. He's on the near side as the deep man as Sutkowitz gets ready to kick off for the University of Michigan. The run up and the kick, a high end over end boot, will be handled by Woodson. Brought out to the 10, nailed at the 12. Todd Schulte, a junior from Villa Hills, Kentucky, made the tackle. And again, the Wolverines get great coverage. Their special teams have been superb throughout this season. So Purdue University will have the football deep in its own territory for the first series of downs as Jim Everett, the tall senior quarterback, 6'5", 2'12", from Albuquerque, New Mexico, 
brings his team to the huddle at the five yard line. Everett's statistics are nearing the incredible point as he continues to close out a career and a highly successful one at Purdue. They're operating with a receiver wide to the left. That's Griffin. And back on first down to throw. Complete on the near side to Wallace. He's out to the 20, and he gets the first down to about the 22-and-a-half yard line. Garland Rivers and Ivan Hicks collaborated to make the tackle on Ray Wallace, the fullback from Indianapolis. And the Boilers pick up a first down on the first play. Wallace, the fullback, caught her the tailback. They'll catch the ball a lot this afternoon, as will Steve Griffin. Jackson and Scott operating at the twick, uh, quick tackle and guard spots. Our Drent from Kalamazoo, Panful, Connors, Tyree, and Skabinski is the center. A handoff goes to Wallace, goes into the middle, and not much there. Carries to the 26-yard line. Hit by Andy Moeller initially. He's a senior from Ann Arbor Pioneer High School. They'll mark his forward progress to the 26. The Wolverines defensively will have Scarcelli, Mallory, Moeller, and Akers as the linebackers. Up front, it's Messner, Harris, and Mike Hammerstein. Second down and eight yards to go. Receiver wide to the left. Scott, split to the right, Griffin. Back to throw, Everett throws to the far side, caught by Wallace, he is out to near the 32-yard line. Jim Scarcelli hit him and dropped him, and it'll be close to a first down. We'll see where they mark the forward progress. It is short by less than a yard, it appears from here, but they're going to call time and measure. It'll be very close to a first down. It won't take long, the chain is located on the far side, and that's where the football is. The Wolverines defensive backs composed of Garland Rivers, Tony Gant, Ivan Hicks, and Brad Cochran. It is a first down for Purdue University. The second first down of the afternoon in the Boilers' first possession. And already Purdue's used uh, Wallace. He's caught two passes uh, already, Larry. And uh, generally, we would uh, anticipate seeing Rodney Carter catching uh, most of the passes anyway. And Ray Wallace generally is the guy that runs the football. Hayes is flanked wide to the right. Griffin is split to the left. They're operating from the eye. Again, it's Wallace into the middle and not much there. Stopped at the 35-yard line by Mike Hammerstein, a 6'4 senior from Ohio. Ray Wallace has scored seven touchdowns for this team this season. It'll be second down and nine. Scarcelli is into the ball game, replacing Akers for Michigan defensively on second and nine. And Wallace has been involved in every play so far, Larry. Scott is in motion to the short side of the field. Everett back to throw, being rushed. He gets away. Goes to the far side. He's going to be run out of bounds for a loss of about two. Mark Messner made the big pressure on Everett. Almost had him, but Jimmy sprung away got to the far sideline, avoided the big loss, and they say he did get back to the line of scrimmage, the original line of scrimmage. But it is a loss of two, and it'll be third down and ten. Reinhold has checked in at middle guard for the Wolverines, and Billy Harris is out. It's a very tough situation here for Purdue, third and ten. I expect Michigan to uh, probably set back, maybe come with a, a linebacker blitz. If they show the blitz, which you see there now, they'll probably back off. It's a semi-shotgun. They do back off. Throw to the far side, and it's incomplete. It was intended for Steve Griffin. Garland Rivers came roaring up from the secondary, and Purdue fails in its attempt to post its third first down. A big ovation for the Michigan defensive unit as it checks off. Here you see Steve Griffin, number two, who came into this game with 23 catches. He's a senior out of Miami, Florida, and uh, Scarcelli, number 85, had underneath coverage, and he really was the guy that knocked down the football. You don't see it in that particular uh, shot, but Garland Rivers was on a man-to-man, -man, number 13. Ernie Schrommeyer, who averages 38 yards per punt, stands at his 20, waiting for the snap. Eric Campbell is at the Michigan 26. Big rush. May Penalty. have gotten a piece of it. Penalty. The flag is down, perhaps roughing the kicker. It will be. 
Arnold came roaring through and may have been the man that committed the foul. It will be roughing the punter, Larry. They really should have blocked that particular kick, I thought. There were five guys in there. There's really no excuse when you got that many people uh, penetrating. Uh, sometimes you just don't look at the football, and uh, you fall on the kicker instead of watching the football and trying to block it. Uh, you just react uh, to the kicker himself, and uh, that time they missed the ball but got the kicker. So as a result, the ball has been moved forward to the 39-yard line. And it'll be fourth down and five. So Schrammeyer will go back to his 25-yard line. Nobody back for Michigan to receive the punt. Now Tony Gant goes back. Moving back to the 25-yard line. Good snap. No pressure this time. It's a low-line drive kick. Gant fumbled the ball, and it goes out of bounds. He got his hands on it, but did not hold it, and it scooted out of bounds on the 19-yard line. So a pretty good punt by Schraumeyer with no return. 43-yard punt for Schraumeyer, and the Wolverines will have the ball for the first time this afternoon. It's kind of an interesting switch. The Wolverines had Eric Campbell back on the first punt and then sent Gat back on the second attempt. I couldn't tell you why either, Larry. I'll have to check that. Jamie Morris is in the ball game. There was some question as to whether he would play this afternoon because of a shoulder injury. He is operating a tailback as Jim Harbaugh brings the Wolverines to the line of scrimmage for the first time this afternoon. Jokic is split wide to the right. Kolazar has a flanker to the left. Kolazar has been bothered a bit by injury also. Morris gets five quick yards out to the 26-yard line. We have a player down on the field and uh, he's getting up slowly. It looks like Tony Visco is going to be all right, however. The Wolverines backs and receivers. White, Morris, Campbell, Jokic, and Katas operating as the split end and tight end respectively. Up front, it's Elliott, Vitale, Dabacino, Kraus, and Clay Miller. It'll be second down and four for the Wolverines. Jokic is split to the right. Again, Kolazar is flanked to the left. And the pitch goes to Morris. Not much there as he cut back inside and he was drilled at the 25-yard line. His forward progress carried him to the 26. It'll be short of a first down by about three yards. Fred Strickland, the big outside linebacker, made the tackle for the Boilers. Visco, Morgan, and Strickland operating as the linebackers with Ziltz, Holly, Horner, and Baldwin up front for Purdue. Ziltz got good penetration on that last play. It didn't really allow uh, Morris to get outside the way he would have liked to. The right end is tight. That's Caddis. Jokic is split to the left, and Kolazar flanked to the left. That's the long side of the field on third and three. Harbaugh back to throw. Looks, unloads, and it's incomplete. It was intended for Jokic who attempted a diving catch at the 38-yard line, but it was a little low, couldn't handle it. I think Harbaugh had to unload a little bit prematurely because he was getting some pressure at the last moment. You're absolutely right. There was good pressure by the Purdue defense, but I'm a little shocked that uh, Jokic didn't come up with that p particular catch. I thought, uh, you know, it was well within his realm of uh, being able to come up with a catch. For the Back to throw. putt, Matty Robbins. Steve Griffin will receive. He stands at the Boilers 30 yard line. Some pressure, but he got it away, and it's a high, booming kick. A flag is down, and we're going to have a roughing the kicker penalty, I believe, against Purdue. And if indeed that's the case, that would give the Wolverines a first down. It is a roughing the kicker penalty, and will move the ball out to the 31 yard line, and that will give Michigan a first down at it's own 31. It was once again take a look here. There's about three or four Purdue players that make the penetration and nobody seems to be able to come up with the block. Once again, I fault that to not watching the, 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 the actual punter's foot and the football. Instead, they run after the kicker. It's a mistake that uh, both teams have made now, but it's going to cost Purdue a lot more than it cost Michigan because you're right, Michigan does get a first down with the five-yard penalty. Kolazar comes wide to the left, and Jokic is split to the right. 
Perryman is in at fullback for the Wolverines. And White has dropped back to the tailback slot as Harbaugh is throwing on first down. He's going long. He's got the first down. He's going down to the 23-yard line. Chris Dishman made a touchdown scoring tackle, but it's a huge gain for the Wolverines' 47-yard pass play. You'll see here that uh, Jim Harbaugh actually is late throwing this football. Colazar was wide open. I mean, if he throws the ball on time, it's six points. There's no question about it. But uh, Dishman did a nice job of recovering and making the tackle, saving the touchdown uh, uh, pass reception for Michigan. First and 10 for the Wolverines at the 22. Jokic split to the left. Colazar flanked to the right. White carries, sticks his head down and plows across the 20 to about the 19, maybe the 18-yard line. Well, the Boilermakers can look back at the roughing the kicker penalty, and it has cost them severely if this drive continues on downfield for the Wolverines. It's the type of mistake, Larry, you cannot afford to make against a good football team. Woodson, Wilson, Foster, and Dishman, the secondary for Purdue. Caddis switches, becomes the tight end on the right side now as Colazar is flanked to the right on second down. Just a big struggle to the 17-yard line. Not much there for Gerald White. Barbarach made the tackle for Purdue. And it'll bring up third down and about four yards, a long four, at the 17-yard line. Harbaugh, after coming to the sideline, checks back to the huddle, and he'll send Colazar wide to the left with Jokic to the right as a split right end. Probably play action here. It's a strong overset to the left. Play action off tackle. Harbaugh being rushed. He's in trouble. He goes to the far sideline and out of bounds at the 19-yard line. So some pressure applied by the Boilers have forced Michigan into a fourth and sixth situation. Kevin Holley putting a lot of heat on this man, Jim Harbaugh. And it'll be an attempt for three by Mike Gillette for the Wolverines. After it looked as though Michigan would be going for six as a result of that 47-yard pass to John Colazar. This will be a 36-yard attempt. Monty Robbins will spot the ball at the 26-yard line. Lines are down. The snap, the spot, the kick is plenty long, and it is not good. It is off to the side, and Purdue escapes the big bullet and will take over the ball with 8 minutes 37 seconds left in the opening quarter. It is still a scoreless game. Not very good. You always want to take advantage of uh, every scoring opportunity that you're presented with, and uh, Mike Gillette didn't hook that ball quite enough. It looked like it was, it just sailed straight on him instead of hooking across to go in between the uprights. Gillette had hit on 13 of 18 previous field goal attempts. He fails at his first attempt this afternoon, and Purdue takes over the ball at the 20-yard line. Jackson is split to the right. Jim Everett looking up and down the line of scrimmage, turns, gives to Carter, and he picks up about a yard, possibly two. Mike Hammerstein made the first hit on him. They'll mark it at the 22-yard line, a gain of a pair for Rodney Carter who averages just three yards per carry. Carter, I believe that's the first time he's touched the football. The thing that surprises me the most so far, Larry, uh, with regards to Purdue, is they continue to want to run the football on first down. I think that's putting them in a, in a hole because they've not been able to gain any yardage on first down running the football. I look for them to start throwing it on first down soon. Ever back to throw, dumps it over the middle, completes at the 25, out to the 30, and Connor gets to the 32-yard line for a first down. Andy Muller made the tackle. A nice bit of running on the part of Rodney Cutter after he made the reception. He got the yardage needed for the first down, and the Boilers move it ahead. It'll be just shy of the 33-yard line. Excellent acting job that particular time by the quarterback, Jim Everett, 
If you look here, by the time he throws the ball to number 24, Rodney Carter, the linebackers are so far down the field that nobody even comes into the pitcher until he runs five yards. Then you see him make a nice move on 85, Jim Car Scarcelli. But a nice bit of running by Rodney Carter, their leading receiver. On first down, Everett throws over the middle, incomplete whammo. Ray Wallace was the intended receiver, and he was really belted after the ball had passed him by. He did not see him coming from the blind side, and he took a pretty good shot. That'll bring up second down and ten. You were talking about the ground game for Purdue. The Boilermakers are averaging only 100 yards a game rushing. It's an aerial attack that Coach Leon Burknett features. And as a result of that rushing uh, yardage, Purdue is number nine in the Big Ten in the ground game statistics. Second down and ten yards to go. Jackson is flanked to the left. Griffin split to the right. Over the middle it goes. Deflected. Grant Cochran made the interception following the tip. And the Wolverines will take over on their own 45-yard line. This is why you do not, as a quarterback, want to throw over defenders. Everett here will throw the ball, try to get it over Mike Mallory. There was too many people. You see 42 Mallory there, tips it, and Cochran, number 30, comes up with the interception. His second interception of the year, but it is imperative as a quarterback that you not try to throw over defenders because they can jump up and tip the ball, as we saw right there, and it will turn into an, an interception. It's all right to throw between people, Larry, but never try to throw over basic fundamental rule. It cost the Boilermakers possession of the ball and the Wolverines while they failed to score in their first possession moved downfield. Now they start with Wiltshire back in the ball game as tailback and Harbaugh is smothered for a loss back at the 35 yard line. Racing in was Brad Horner a senior from Louisiana and Harbaugh didn't have a prayer. The big loss will move it back to the 35. Good penetration by Purdue here. Uh, it was a play action uh, pass, a fake off tackle to Jamie Morris, but you see number 92 right there, Brad Horner, comes in for his third sack of the season. It's a loss of 10 and will present a second down and 20 situation for the Wolverines. The San Colas are wide to the left. They have also split Paul Jokic to the left. That's the long side of the field. Six men up on the line of scrimmage now for Purdue as Harbaugh retreats. Dumps it off and a nice catch made at the 35-yard line. Chris Dishman made the tackle on Colazar, but it's not much of a gain. It, it really isn't, Larry, but the thing that the problem here was the timing. Uh, for some reason, Jim got the ball, Jim Harbaugh threw the ball awfully late once again to Colazar. Uh, I thought that they were running a combination pattern to the bottom of the to the bottom of the screen and uh, Colazar came open a lot sooner than the ball got there and as a result Colazar because he's taught to come back to the football had already started coming back and that's the reason why uh, they didn't really pick up a whole lot of yardage on that particular play. A gain of just one yard and it's third down and 19. Harbaugh with a swing pass complete to White and he is dropped for a loss. Bob Ziltz came roaring in, got hung up with one of the Michigan blockers, and White had no place to go but down. And Purdue, with a very strong defensive performance against the Wolverines in this particular series, will take over the ball. You'll see Gerald Wright, White here uh, waiting on a screen play, but there was way too much penetration. 71 there is actually being blocked by number 72, John Elliott, right into the tackler, or right into the receiver, and makes the tackle for the loss. Good defensive effort that time by Purdue. Both Steve Griffin and Rod Woodson are deep in anticipation of Monty Robbins' punt. A high hanger. And a fair catch called for by Griffin. Dropped the ball and covered by Michigan. A 54-yard punt that Griffin had called a fair catch for. He dropped it, and Borowski fell on the ball for the Wolverines to get advantage of another big break. Just a fundamental error. Uh, you just got to be able to catch the ball. I don't know whether or not his hands are cold or what, but uh, 
he can't afford to do that and turn a, turn the football over to a good football team like Michigan. McIntyre was there initially, but I believe it was Borowski that will get credit for the recovery. So the Wolverines with a big break have a first down on the Boilers 24 yard line. Golazar flanked wide to the right. Morris is back in a tailback now. He has White in front of him as the fullback in the eye formation. The pitch to Morris. Got a little running room and knifes down to the 21-yard line. Brad Horner nailed him and dropped him after a gain of about three. 4.46 left in the opening quarter. It's a scoreless game here at Michigan Stadium. Colazar comes out of the ball game. will pick up his replacement in just a moment. Two tight ends. Right. Jokish has dropped back as a flanker to the right. Harbaugh rolling to the right side. Now dumps it down the middle. It is caught beautifully on the far side by Caddis. They'll mark his forward progress to the four yard line. It'll be first down and goal for the Wolverines. Well, it took a while for Eric to come open, but. He finally did, and here's Eric, hit him. Eric Caddis, number 81, the second leading receiver for this fine Michigan football team. Coming into this game, he had 24 catches. This will be his 25th. Jim Harbaugh does a nice job of waiting on him to clear the uh, defensive uh, linebacker coverage, and uh, once he breaks contain, he throws the football downfield. Eric Caddis does a nice job of catching first down for Michigan. First and goal at the four-yard line. White is in at tailback now. Morris has pulled up the fullback. A bad pitch. We've got some whistles and some flags. And probably just as well because <laughs> that was not handled very cleanly by Gerald White. Illegal procedure against the Wolverines. And I guess that Gerald White knew that the referee had called that uh, had stopped the play because he certainly didn't react to this football. You'll see here as he drops it, it's just like, oh, who cares? <laughs> He'd get in a whole lot of trouble. You can see there, he didn't even care. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, you can't assume anything. That's true. And it, had he not reacted, he would have had one <laughs> mad coach <laughs> on the sideline. You think Bo to talk to him about it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> ball, Jokic has gone back into the ball game. Kolazar is also in. There's the penalty yardage for the afternoon thus far. It's first down. Ball back at the nine-yard line now as a result of the penalty. Harbaugh back to throw. Throws long. For a touchdown. Caddis apparently kept that foot in, and it's six for the Wolverines. Okay, I want to show you what touch is all about. Jim Harbaugh does just a superb job here of lofting this ball, and really, you can see it. Watch it, it's being lofted up, but it gives Eric Caddis time enough to react to it. He was way inside, came back, put his feet, both feet inbound, and did a super job, just a super job by Jim Harbaugh and Eric Caddis on that touchdown play. A brilliant Wolverine touchdown pass, and Gillette drives it through, and the Wolverines lead the Boilermakers by a score of 7 0, scoring on their second possession this afternoon. Three minutes and 34 seconds left in the opening quarter, and the Wolverines take the lead. 7-0 over the visitors from West Lafayette. I can't tell you enough about what a great pass this was thrown by Jim Harbaugh because, see, he's got to loft that ball in order to let Caddis react. Now, you remember that Caddis went down inside and then broke back outside. Well, Harbaugh had already let the ball go before he started breaking outside, and that's what took that patience on the ball, the loft on the ball, in order to let Caddis react to it. It was just a super throw by Jim Harbaugh. It follows the touchdown, follows the intercepted forward pass by Brad Cochran after it had been tipped by Mallory, and the Wolverines moved straight down the field. It took them only three plays and only a minute and 22 seconds. And it's 7 to nothing. Wallace and Woodson are the deep men. It will be Rick Sutkowitz to kick off for the Wolverines. Correction, it was following the fumble the Wolverines went in for the touchdown. I beg your pardon. I was looking at that 24-yard drive, and suddenly I realized that that can't be right. Here's the kickoff. 
It's taken by Wallace. Comes to the middle and breaks out to the 21-yard line. Ray Wallace, the senior from Indianapolis, Indiana, returns the ball to the 21-yard line. The Boilermakers, who are down 7-0, will try to get it organized. Ray Wallace uh, doing a nice job of cradling the football because they can ill afford to turn the football over once again. They've already had a couple. And I think it's important as we look at, the, I believe that's Wallace, but still down. No, check that. It's uh, Williams who is Williams. a little slow in getting up. They have had the breath knocked out of him. Looks like he'll be okay as you take a look into the Wolverine offensive huddle. Elliot, Elliot Muzilak telling him how it is. Three minutes and 30 seconds left in the opening quarter. Michigan leading at 7 0. The Boilermakers being talked with by Jim Everett, their quarterback, who has hit three of six attempts and has thrown one interception. He has Scott wide to the left and Griffin split to the right. Straight back to throw, being rushed, backs off, he's hit and dropped for a loss, back at the eight-yard line. Mark Messner finally wrapped him up after Hammerstein hit him initially, and Messner finally grabbed him and dropped him, a sophomore from Milford Catholic Central. Great penetration here by both Hammerstein and Mark Mesner, number 60 and number 66. You can see Hammerstein there really forces him in to number 60, Mark Mesner. But let's give them both a credit for the sack. Mesner came in with nine leading the team, and uh, Hammerstein had six. So uh, each of them get a sack on that one, I think. Reinhold into the game to replace Billy Harris at middle guard for the Wolverines. Everett backs off to operate from the semi-shotgun. Turns, hands the ball inside to Wallace. And there's not much there for Raymond, who gets out to the 10-yard line. Mike Mallory sniffed it out and closed it off immediately at the 10. So the Boilermakers really haven't had much of an opportunity, or they've had their opportunities, but have not been able to take advantage of them to move the football and against the, this fine defensive play. And the real problem is, Larry, that they've been uh, unable to gain good yardage on first down. In this particular series, they lost yardage, and you just can't do that against a good football, a good defensive football team. Griffin split to the right on third down and 10. Everett at this goal line unloads. It's complete to Scott on the near side, and he is ridden out of bounds at the 15-yard line by Jim Scarcelli. And again, Purdue will be forced to give up the ball. And again, it's a huge ovation for this highly ranked Michigan defensive unit. You watch Mar Marty Scott coming uh, across the field on the uh, cross pattern, crossing pattern. Does a nice job of catching it. He's their second leading receiver behind Rodney Carter. Ernie Schraumeyer putting from his five. They got a piece of it. It's up to the 30-yard line, 35, and down at the 38-yard line. Again, the big rush, and the Wolverines blocked the putt. He was only at the 10-yard line. Did not seem like he was very deep at all to get his putt away. Yeah, per perhaps his lineup was not deep enough, but he's taking an awful long time trying to get that ball set. Number 15, you'll see right there, David Arnold, the freshman from Warren, Ohio, comes in and gets a piece of it, and uh, Michigan will have good field position once again. They'll start at the 31-yard line. That's where the official marks it. Jokish goes wide to the right. Kolazar flanked to the short side of the field on the left. Five-man front, and the man on the left side of the defensive line for Purdue jumped offside. No, I think it was against John Elliott, the offensive guy, personally, but let's wait. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was Wimberley who darted offside, made contact, and it'll cost five yards. So it'll be first down and five from the 26-yard line for the University of Michigan. Guess I owe Mr. Elliott an apology. Sorry, <laughs> Big John. <laughs> I don't think he's going to be bothered too much. 
Jokic is split to the right. Kolazar flanked to the left. On first and five for Michigan. The Wolverines lead it by a score of seven to nothing. Harbaugh may be changing the play. He pitches back to Morris. He's got White out in front. Turns it on at the 20, 15, and down he goes at the 13-yard line. Big block thrown by Gerald White as Morris turned inside that block. But there may be a flag down. There is illegal use of the hands back at the 28-yard line. And believe it or not, I think they call this on Paul Jokic. Look at the top of the screen right there. That's where the penalty appeared to have happened. Um, but I'm not real sure. But anyway, Michigan's going to be called for holding, and that's going to really hurt. That negates the big play by Jamie Morris and will result in a penalty back to the 36-yard line for holding. And the Wolverines with a minute 12 left in the first quarter will be looking now at a first and 15. Look at uh, Coach Moeller, defensive coordinator, assistant head coach. Gary Moeller, former head coach at Illinois. Some expect him to succeed Bo Schembechler one day whenever he uh, decides to let it go. First and 15 for Michigan. Colazar in motion to the long side of the field. Harbaugh back to throw. Swing pass complete to Morris. He's at the 40. Cuts back against the grain. 35. And down he goes at the 32-yard line. He picked up about six. Kevin Holly, a junior from Washington, Pennsylvania, made the tackle on Jamie Morris. The Wolverines get the ball back to the original line of scrimmage, which will present a second and ten situation with just 23 seconds left in the opening quarter. Michigan huddling at the 40, comes to the line of scrimmage. The Boilermakers have given up a number of points this season. There have been a lot of points scored against the defensive unit. The Wolverines have seven at the moment, looking for more. Harbaugh being chased, and he'll be run out of bounds back at around the 36-yard line. We'll see when they mark it. It'll be the 35. Fred Strickland put a lot of pressure on Harbaugh and ultimately ran him out of bounds. So it'll be a third and uh, about hmm, 12 yards to go when we resume play. The clock time has expired ending the first period of play here at Michigan Stadium. So one quarter has gone into the books. The Wolverines lead Purdue by a score of 7 to nothing. We'll be back with me. Prepare for the second quarter of action here at Michigan Stadium. Wolverines with 69 yards total offense in the first quarter. Minus one rushing. Purdue with 30 yards total offense. Minus six rushing, so the ground attack has not been <laughs> it's not all working that very well. Yeah. <laughs> Third down, 13. Michigan comes to the line of scrimmage with Colazar wide to the right. Harbaugh on loads. Colazar got it. by John Colazar who dragged Chris Dishman into the end zone with him and it is 13 to nothing Wolverines play the Boilermakers great anticipation once again by Jim Harbaugh you'll see here he'll get plenty of pressure from the inside some Michigan or defender from Purdue but uh, Harbaugh gets the ball away in plenty of time leads his man perfectly and John Colazar comes up with his third big catch already this afternoon for a touchdown great play by both Jim Harbaugh and John Colazar now Gillette will attempt to put this 14th point up and he does so on the first play following the change of ends the Michigan Wolverines score again and lead Purdue by a score of 14 to nothing a 34 yard touchdown pass into the breeze we had been speculating earlier if the Wolverines had to go for three they would be kicking into the wind in the second quarter but that was all taken away on the fine touchdown pass from Jim Harbaugh to the freshman from Westlake, Ohio, John Colazar. And the Wolverines have upped their lead to 14 to nothing. Georgia 7, 
Well, it has been a little bit of a strange game, hasn't it? We'll take another look at the TD pass Great here. anticipation once again this time by Jim Harbaugh. You can see he leads his man, and Colazar does an excellent job of catching it over his left shoulder and then has the presence of mind. He fumbled the ball, actually, in the end zone. We just picked that up there. But he was already across the goal line, so it, wouldn't, it didn't really matter. But uh, Colazar, nice catch. Big, big play for the young freshman. Great play drive. A minute 27 seconds, 34-yard touchdown pass to John Colazar. The Wolverines lead 14 to nothing. The ground attack for neither team has been particularly uh, impressive here this afternoon, but the Wolverines have utilized the air lanes, and that is what Purdue's game is. But so far, Jim Everett has not been able to get his offense on track. So fine defensive play by the Wolverines, an interception, all keeping the Boilermakers pretty much under wraps through the first quarter. Sutkowitz will kick off. Sends it to the far side, and this will go out of bounds at the four-yard line. So we'll do it all over again. You know, Michigan always talks about great ball control, but they've scored uh, two times now. One, the first drive was three plays, a minute and 23 seconds. The second drive was a minute and 27 seconds. Uh, one 31 yards and the other one 24 yards. That's real ball control. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, if you only have that many yards to travel, it does take a little less time. <laughs> it does take a little less but time. But you're right. It's not what you call clock-consuming control. But the object of the game is to get into the end zone. End zone. If you get in there often enough, it doesn't make any difference how long the other team has the ball, I guess. One of the deep men, Rod Woodson, a junior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, is talking with his running mate, Ray Wallace, a senior from Indianapolis, as Rick Sutkowitz will now kick off from the 35-yard line as a result of the illegal procedure penalty. He kicked the ball out of bounds at the four-yard line. Woodson is quite a player. He had uh, he was UPI and API player of the uh, Midwest player of the week against Notre Dame a couple weeks ago. Honorable mention Big Ten last season. Setkowitz. A crazy hop and Woodson has to go back to the eight yard line. Comes out to the 15 struggles forward to the 17 or 18 yard line before he is nailed as Wallace brought it back and it'll be Purdue's ball. You know the Wolverines have really created some breaks here this afternoon. The first touchdown scoring after the uh, fumbled punt and then the second after the blocked punt. You can see there that football really takes a lot of funny bounces and uh, whoever invented the shape of it they did a nice job because you never know which, which way it's going to bounce. Sometimes it causes fumbles and sometimes it helps you. And always causes gray hair among coaches. Yes. Pass out to Wallace is a little bit low. He couldn't handle it. Falls incomplete. Scarcelli was out there defending, but Wallace is a little bit slow in getting up. As a matter of fact, uh, he's still not up. So Ray Wallace is down on the far side of the field. We'll have a slight delay here at Michigan Stadium as he is attended to by the medical staff for Purdue. Wallace is very, very important to this Purdue offense. He came into this particular game fifth in the Big Ten in all-purpose running, and uh, he is their leading rusher and also their leading scorer with, uh, I think, six touchdowns. So they can ill afford to lose him. He's a tremendous athlete. He was honorable mention all-Big Ten as a defensive back in 1982 and won honorable mention honors as a running back last season. Wallace is okay. Apparently just had the breath knocked away. It'll be second down and 10 yards to go for the Boilermakers. Jim Everett looking at a five-man front. Goes straight back to throw. Getting some heat. Gets away. Fires it over the middle. And it was a little behind Steve Griffin and could not hang on. Again, great pressure applied this time by Hammerstein and Messner. To the defensive tackles for the Wolverines. Everett did escape, but his pass was behind Steve Griffin. Leon Burtnett, in his fourth year as the coach of the Boilermakers. Dieter Heron has gone to the ball game for Michigan, replacing Jeff Akers defensively. Third down and ten. Griffin is split to the right. Everett backs up. 
operating from the shotgun now sends Scott wide to the left in motion ever back to throw throws over the middle it's caught at the 22 yard line and James Medlock is drilled immediately by Garland Rivers Medlock's first pass reception this afternoon he's a sophomore from Waycross Georgia and, and really short of a first down and really what this is is a delay pattern underneath the uh, coverage and uh, Michigan will give this up all day long particularly in a third down situation when they're short of the first down uh, they'll give up uh, you know four or five yards but they would like to uh, keep Purdue uh, from making those first downs and they're successful here Purdue will have to punt this is Dieter Heron who may have a muscle spasm in the calf of his leg let's hope that's uh, all it is although they're Kind of working on that knee now. I thought they were massaging that calf muscle, but that's Heron that is down for Michigan. When play resumes, it'll be fourth down and four yards to go, and it'll be a putting situation as Ernie Schrammeyer from Port Quebec, Quebec, who averages 43 yards per punt this season and got some boomers away earlier, will be kicking. And he's also had plenty of pressure on him already this afternoon. And I'm sure he's got to be thinking about that defensive line uh, pressure in terms of trying to get this kick away. The last kick he had was partially blocked by David Arnold. And I'm sure Mr. Arnold is waiting to uh, try to get in there and block another one. Eric Campbell, the deep man for Michigan, stands at his own 39. This is Ernie Schraumeyer. He's at the 11. We're in the early stages of the second quarter at Michigan Stadium. Wolverines lead the Boilers 14 to nothing. He's only 11 yards behind the line of scrimmage. The Wolverines had everybody up for a moment. Now dropped two men back. And he gets the punt away, but it's not a very good one. Hangs high, bounces at the 45, gets a good Purdue bounce, and will roll dead around the 35 or 4 yard line. Well, it's still rolling to the 32. So Schraumeyer, with not much of a punt, picked up an additional 15 to 17 yards as a result of the roll, and he turned out in pretty decent shape. Yeah, he's got to be pleased that the football is shaped the way it is on that particular <laughs> play. <laughs> Little instruction on the sideline on how to punt the ball. He has had uh, a very consistent season this year, but uh, this afternoon he hasn't had a great career day. So Wolverines take over the ball on their own 32 yard line. Jamie Morris is in at tailback. White operating at fullback. Colazar flanked to the right. And the ends are tight. Five man, six man front. Pitch back to Jamie Morris. Runs to the outside. Turns the corner. Upfield breaks a tackle. 40 on the sideline. 45 driven out of bounds at the midfield stride. Tony Visco made the tackle on Jamie Morris who put on quite a display of running ability as he cut to the far sideline. 18-yard gallop. Nice run uh, on this particular play. It was well blocked. Strickland, uh, number 48, got caught inside. You see Rod Woodson, 26 there, misses a tackle. And also 59, Matt Morgan uh, missed a tackle. And Morris just keeps on down the sideline. He's very strong for a back that's only 5'7 and 175 pounds. You see there, he's already picked up 27 yards this afternoon in four rushes. That's well under his uh, average, uh, which is 5.0. He had 179 yards against Indiana. That was his career high, but he is over the 700-yard mark during the 85 season in rushes, and he's only a sophomore. 1351 left to be played in this first half. Time is out on the football field. The first down and 10 faces the Wolverines at the midfield stripe when play resumes. I said it, that was well under his average. It's actually over his average, 4 for 27. Bo Schembechler on the near sideline. Kolazar has come out of the ball game with the Okich in to replace him. It's a very colorful sight here this afternoon, basically as a result of the showers that we had earlier. A lot of different uh, shades of rain gear, and it is a spectacular sight. Autumn colors have been unwrapped. Very appropriate. Pair of tight ends, a flanker to the right is Jokic on first and 10 from the 50-yard line. 
Our ball gives to Morris. He's got a bit of a hole, squeezes through down to just shy of the Purdue 45 yard line. Sumlin came up and made the tackle on Jamie, but he picked up four and it'll be second down and six. Now Colas are back into the ball game. He'll replace Paul Jokic for the Wolverines. Michigan has run a, a set with a pair of tight ends on the last two trips to the line of scrimmage, and it looks like that's the way it'll be here on the third consecutive down. Colazar is a wide receiver to the right that's alongside of the field. White struggles, breaks a tackle, gets inside the 45 down to the 43-yard line. It was Fred Strickland that made the tackle for Purdue. He'll be short of a first down by perhaps three yards. We'll see when they spot the ball. It's at the... 42 and a half yard line. It'll be about a two and a half yards to go for the first down. Bob Perryman comes into the game. He replaces Morris. You'll see Jay, uh, Gerald White here uh, running for some tough yards inside. Strickland, number 48, did a nice job there of putting his head on the runner and tackling uh, Jamie or Gerald White for a short gain. Third down at two. White has shifted back to the tailback slot now with Perryman in at the fullback position. Morris is out. The pitch back to White tries to turn the corner and he is hauled down before he got to the stake by Fred Strickland who is having quite an afternoon for the Boilermakers and Purdue holds and will force the Wolverines into a fourth down and long uh, fourth down and uh, yard situation at the 42 yard line. So this is really the first time that Purdue has stopped Michigan this afternoon. The Elliott Uzlak on the uh, near side talking and uh, out to do the punting is Monty Robbins with Griffin and Woodson as the deep men for the Boilermakers standing at the 10. Woodson on the near side. Robbins kick is a high beauty. A hanger comes down at the right at the goal line. It looked like it was going to fall around the three yard line and take one of those high hops. Wolverines with great punt coverage downfield very easily could have downed the ball before it reached the goal line but it landed on the stripe and it'll be brought out to the 20 for a first down 14 nothing Wolverines lead with 12 21 left in the opening half and Bo Schembechler's defensive team has virtually shut down this man's club well he's not allowed his team has really suffered on first down on offense he's got to get uh, pick up better yardage on first down in order to try to predict what the defense will do. If you uh, come up short on first down, the defense can predict to you what they want you to do. Uh, you know, that they can go to blitzes and certain uh, coverages, but you've got to pick up yardage on first down in order to control the ball offensively. Medlock in motion to the left as Everett retreats, has some time this trip. Still looking, throws downfield incomplete. Well, again, the defensive secondary for the Wolverines. Had everybody covered. Everett had no one to throw the ball to. Hammerstein put some heat on him. He had to unload and save the loss at second down and 10. Metlock has gone to the uh, correction. Jackson has gone to the far sideline. Harris has checked in defensively for the Wolverines now at middle guard. Scott comes uh, wide to the left on second down and 10. Griffin is split to the right for Purdue. They're operating from the shotgun again. Everett back the throw over the middle, completes the pass to Carter, and he is out to the 29-yard line, short of the first down by about a yard. Gap made the tackle on Rodney Carter. Some pressure put on by Andy Moeller before Everett got rid of it, but it's short of the first down by a yard. Nice job this time by Jim Everett. You'll see here he'll look off deep to the right, fake the ball, and then come back uh, to a secondary receiver, number 24, Rodney Carter. I believe this is only Carter's second reception today, and we told you that he came into the to this game leading the nation. He's second in receiving and first in the Big Ten. He had 13 catches against Michigan State. Everett hands the ball to get the first down. Out to about the 34-yard line. Mike Mallory made the tackle on James Medlock. And Purdue gets one of its few first downs since its opening possession. 14 to nothing. Wolverines lead Purdue. You see James Medlock, who's in the ball game really for Rodney Carter, uh, replacing him. Running off tackle here, doing a nice job. Picks up the first down for Purdue. It's only the fourth first down of the afternoon for the Boilermakers. 
But they moved the ball out to the 33 as Everett goes back to throw. Over the middle it goes, incomplete, intended for Carter. Had both hands on the ball, but dropped it. It's getting rather dark in Ann Arbor now. We are still in uh, very early stages of this ball game with 11-10 left in the contest in the first half, but uh, it has gotten very cloudy and dark here. Turn the lights on. Yeah, they're on. <laughs> <laughs> they're on to the scoreboard. That's about it. It'll be second down and 10. Ever takes a look at uh, Wolverines as they deploy their defense. Drops back in the shotgun, changes the play. And fires it back, caught by Carter, and he is really drilled at the 35-yard line by Tony Gatt, who put a form tackle on him after a gain of about two yards. That shotgun hasn't done a whole lot for the Watermakers this afternoon either. There's just great penetration by both Mark Mesner, number 60, and number 66, Mike Hammerstein. You'll see here, they've both come crashing in. I believe Hammerstein is at the top of your picture. You see him there, number 66 down. But they're forcing him out of the pocket, even with the shotgun. So that means that they're getting great penetration uh, from uh, the defensive line. Third and seven, and Everett has trouble again. And down he goes at the 24-yard line. A flag is down at the 27-yard line. But I would guess that that would be against Purdue. Reinhold wrapped himself around Everett's leg and would not let go. It is against Purdue, illegal use of the hands, a holding call. The Wolverines, of course, declined because of the huge loss back to the 24. And Purdue, again, is forced to give up possession. On fourth and 18, Schrammeyer is in to punt from his 12-yard line. And Eric Campbell stands at the Wolverine 40. Again, Schraubmeyer just 11 yards behind the line of scrimmage. There's Campbell waiting the kick. One has already been blocked this afternoon. And look out, he got this one away. A high wobbly kick going to the far sideline. Takes a skip out of bounds at the 38. So the Wolverines will have great field position to begin operations here in this possession. Ten minutes and five seconds left to be played in this second quarter and the Wolverines lead it 14 to nothing. <laughs> Purdue has not had much success here at Ann Arbor over the years. The Wolverines have won 18 of the last the 22 games played between these two teams here at Michigan Stadium. And they're ahead 14 to nothing this afternoon. Colazar flanked to the right. Harbaugh turns, gives to Morris. He's got some running room across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Matt Morin made the tackle along with Fred Strickland, who seems to be all over the field this afternoon. He has carried Morris six times for 34 yards today. And Jamie was somewhat of a question mark as a result of the banged-up shoulder sustained in the game against Illinois last week. But he's doing his part today. Well, when game day comes around, you really, you know, all of the effort that goes into practicing all week long, you really want to get something out of it or for it. And uh, a lot of guys get up for the game when game time rolls around. They come together. Our ball fakes the handoff. Back to throw. Complete on the near side. The white at the 46. Hit immediately and dropped by Kenneth Wilson. It is short of the first down by about a yard. We'll see when they bring it in from the far sideline and spot it. It'll be between the 42 and 3 yard line, uh, correction, the 47 and 8 yard lines. And it is just short of the 48 to which the Wolverines must advance. Nice play here. Fake off tackle to Jamie Morris. And then he comes out and uh, throws a nice ball to Gerald White. who comes up a little short of the first down. Kennedy Wilson on the play, on the tackle, number 23 for Purdue. Short by less than a yard. Third down, less than a yard for the first down. Again, a pair of tight ends. As Colazar is the wide receiver to the long side, which is the left. Quarterback sneak. And uh, Mr. Haba had nothing but a big hole to race through and carried near the 50-yard line. Strickland again made the tackle. He was honorable mention running back. Fred Strickland was in the Big Ten. He rushed for uh, 900 yards as a senior in high school. 
but he was switched to a defensive role upon his arrival in Purdue. Jokic back into the ball game. He's going wide to the left as a split left end. That's the long side of the field, and Kolazar is flanked to the left on first and ten for the Wolverines. Ball just short of the 50. And a big mix-up on the snap. We'll have an illegal procedure penalty coming up. And we have a Purdue player down at the 50-yard line. Number 68, Anthony Rose, the sophomore out of Elizabeth, New Jersey, appears to be the gentleman down for Purdue. I don't understand that call. Legal, legal procedure on the quarterback on this particular play? It looked like a fumble to me. Well, yeah, it did me also. The public address announcer called it a dead ball illegal procedure. Hmm. But the uh, signal that was given to us by the officials was strictly an illegal procedure call, which uh, can be any number of things, actually. But uh, as you pointed out, it looked like a missed snap handoff. Right. Harbaugh moving out one way, the center moving forward. But you'll see here, uh, number 68 gets hurt. I think somebody rolls on top of him. You can see right now he's going down for the count. He's in pain. Levitz's ankle that was banged up is being helped off to the far side of the field. He looks a little like the refrigerator. 6'1", 278 pounds. He puts on a few more pounds. Big man. Yeah, he's very big. First down and 15. I'll tell you what, the refrigerator's going to have to make the big bucks to keep himself in groceries. <laughs> 14 to nothing the score. Michigan leads Purdue with eight minutes and eight seconds left in the first half. It'll be first down and 15 following the illegal procedure penalty against Michigan. Jokic is split slightly to the right. Kolazar is flanked to the left. Harbaugh back to throw. He's throwing long, looking for Jokic. He's got it at the 20. Out of bounds he goes at the 17-yard line. Lee drove Paul Jokic out of bounds at the 17-yard line of the Wolverines after a 37-yard pass play are down, knocked it on the door once again. Folks, you really can't appreciate what a great pass uh, Harbaugh once again throws here. He throws that ball so far in advance of when Jokic even turns around to look for it, and I'm telling you, it was right on the money. Another super pass by Jim Harbaugh. I mean, he's really thrown some great passes uh, today, Larry. He's hit nine in a row. He's nine for 10 this afternoon for 147 yards here in this opening half. First down for the Wolverines deep in Purdue territory. Pitch to Morris looking for a block. Has to go outside. Turns the corner as Caddis was out leading away. White threw a block that sprung him initially. He got it down to around the 10 yard line and a big gain again for young Jamie Morris. Kennedy Wilson, number 23, the safety man for Purdue, will come up in the pitcher. Gerald White will knock him out right there, and he, Jer Jamie Morris cuts inside, then back outside, does a nice job of following his blocking, and picks up great yardage on first down. It'll be second and two. Perryman has come into the ball game now for the Wolverines, second and two at the 10-yard line. White has shifted back to the tailback slot. Kolazar has come wide to the right as the only wide receiver. A pair of tight ends for Michigan. Six-man front shown by Purdue. White looking for some running room. A flag has been thrown. White penetrates to down around the six-yard line. Tony Visco made the tackle, but a flag was thrown, and it may be a holding call against the Wolverines. That's what it and is. And it is. So the advance forward to the six has been nullified, and the Wolverines will get hit with a penalty. 6.52 left to be played in this opening half. The ball moved back to the 20-yard line as a result of the holding call. Michigan's already had six penalties for 40 yards. Purdue, on the other hand, only two for 10. So Michigan's making quite a few mental errors, even though they're leading 14 to nothing. Second and 12. A little mix-up. Uh, the Wolverines are starting to run out of time on the clock. 12 seconds left on the play, cl play clock. Last minute substitution slowing things down a little bit. Five seconds, four seconds, and they get it underway. White with some running room up the middle, down to the 15-yard line. 
Carroll picking up about five yards for the University of Michigan. Tackle led by Wimbley for the Purdue Oilermakers. Now Colazar comes back into the game. 6-10 left in the opening half. Michigan leads it 14 to nothing. Colazar coming wide to the right as a replacement for Paul Jokic. A pair of tight ends again for Michigan. The two running backs are Perriman and uh, Gerald White. As Harbaugh takes a look, rolls to his right. Fires it. Caught by Perriman at the five and his drives forward to the three-yard line. Chris Dishman made the tackle on Bob Perriman. And it's a first down for Michigan. Here's a low angle look as Jim Harbaugh fakes off tackle. It's a flood pattern. They've got three receivers in one area. Perryman, number 37, comes out of the backfield. Harbaugh stays on the run, makes a nice throw to, uh, to uh, Perryman on the run, picks up a first down. Nice call. Harbaugh is now 10 out of 11 for 158 yards. As you take another look, a nice throw to Perryman out of the backfield. Ball has been advanced to the three-yard line. Man in motion to the right. They hand off to White, and he drills down to about the one-yard line. May have gotten inside the one before he was stopped. It was Wimberley again that was in there quickly along that line of scrimmage, but Perryman makes the big catch. White carries to near the goal line, and it will be second down and about a half yard for the touchdown. Well, that's, that sneak worked so well the last time. I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, see him run it again down here, Larry. That's a good call. We'll have to watch for that. Colazar set as a wing to the right. The ends are tight. Harbaugh looking at a uh, second and a half yard. But he gives to White instead, and he goes in unmolested. Touchdown, Michigan. Gerald White going the final half yard, and the Wolverines have increased their lead over the Purdue Boilermakers to 20 to nothing, and this man probably will be breathing a little easier. You can see, based on the lineup, that uh, Harbaugh could have taken that quarterback sneak. He elected instead to hand back deep to his tailback, Gerald White, number 22, who goes in untouched for another Michigan touchdown. A piece of cake for White. He picks up his first touchdown of the afternoon and uh, his fourth of the season. And it'll be Mike Gillette trying for the extra point. He kicks it through. And Michigan has expanded its lead to a rather impressive 21 0 lead over the Purdue Boilermakers. And they have been riding the talented right arm of Jim Harbaugh through much of this game with a, a pretty good mix of the ground attack. But Harbaugh has been virtually flawless in the past. He really attack. has, Larry. He's made some outstanding throws. And you could really appreciate it, at least I can, being a former quarterback. The great anticipation that he has thrown with this afternoon. I mean, he has just been flawless in terms of how he's thrown the ball early. He's had plenty of uh, uh, rush on him, and uh, he's anticipated his receivers very well and thrown very good passes all afternoon. Can't say enough about what he's done as a passer this afternoon, Jim Harbaugh. Harbaugh, as you may recall, established a team record single game passing performance yardage with 283 against Indiana. Wolverines traveling 62 yards, needing nine plays to do it. Took five minutes and 29 seconds off the clock. White going the final half yard. And it's 21 to nothing. Michigan with 436 left in the opening half. And it'll be Rick Setkowitz to kick it off. Here's another look at the touchdown. As you see, it's well blocked. And I think most of us could have made it in on that particular play. <laughs> That might exclude you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate your honesty. <laughs> the kickoff carries to the far side, taken by Wallace at the five, and he is really drilled at the 13-yard line. Well, you just can't say too much about the Wolverine special teams this afternoon. They have been spectacular. Down to do it this time was Hassel, and... Uh, Looked like Wiltshire. Was Wiltshire on that play? I believe so. Number 27. You'll see here as Ray Wallace is having a little difficulty once again catching the ball. But he takes about five or six steps and then look out. 
trying to see the number on. I really couldn't see whose number, but I did see Tom Wolcher get up and run off the play, run off the field after the play. Everett back to throw in trouble again, and the uh, flag is thrown into the heap. The throw was down into the turf at the 13-yard line. Andy Moeller had Everett wrapped up, and a flag was thrown into that pile. And we'll see what this one is. It's going to be illegal use of the hands against Purdue. So the Boilermakers continue to have problems getting untracked against this fine Michigan defensive team. I think a lot of folks felt that Purdue might move the ball a bit on the talented right arm of this fella. He has had such sensational success throughout the season. But look at that. He has lost 25 yards trying to unload the ball. And his passing statistics are not all that impressive either. 7 for 14 for 54 yards. And that's not what his credentials would indicate. Just unbelievable pressure by the uh, Michigan defensive line. Uh, Mesner and Harris and Hammerstein. They've all been able to put great pressure on Jim Everett, forcing him either out of the pocket or making him throw sooner than he would like to. Penalty has moved the ball back to the six-yard line where it's first down and 16. Everett back to his own end zone. He has big chase from behind. He escapes, gets out to the five and run out of bounds at around the 10-yard line. Hammerstein chased him, may have gotten a piece of him. Mark Messner did. Drove him out at the 10, but Everett just escaped the safety and got it back to the 10-yard line where it'll be second down. And about 14 yards to go. Once again, we can't say enough about the penetration from the defensive line. You'll see 66. Hammerstein, once again, and Everett somehow kind of feels the pressure of Hammerstein coming from behind. And Mesner, number 60 right there, chases him out of bounds. Mesner and Hammerstein have been like bookends this afternoon. They spent as much time in the Purdue backfield as has Everett. Second at 13, shotgun. Everett back in his own end zone looks, throws it over the middle. It's caught at the 12-yard line. He's still on his feet out to the 20. Carter has moved the ball to the 27-yard line for Purdue. Billy Harris made the tackle, and the Boilers pick up their fifth first down of the day. A lot of missed tackles on that particular play, but if Purdue's going to get back into this football game, number 24 is the guy that's got to come alive, and Jim Everett's got to get the football to them. When they are clicking, uh, this team can move, and uh, they've been uh, capable of of, of uh, obtaining like 500 yards on offense passing. You see the two missed tackles there, but Rodney Carter is very, very dangerous coming out of that backfield, as you see on this particular play. Inside handoff goes to Medlock. He goes no place out to about the 30-yard line. But the point you made that Everett has to get the ball to Carter, that is where Messner and uh, Hammerstein have been so very effective. They put so much pressure, pressure. on him. Many of his passes are uh, under pressure, and he's been throwing off target behind receivers. Right. And it's pretty tough to make connections. It's very tough. And Michigan is doing the right thing, and that's putting, the, continuing to put that pressure on the quarterback with their defensive line. Second down and eight. Everett over the middle, caught by Carter, reverses to the left. He's out to the 40 and upended at the 43-yard line. Brad Cochran made the tackle, and it's another first down for the uh, Purdue University Boilermakers. Michigan could have really been hurt on this play because they're blitzing. Both uh, Mallory and Moeller are caught up inside on the blitz. You'll see uh, 49 right there. Moeller caught up inside. Now he gets the ball to uh, Mr. Rodney Carter, and he starts running down the field. Nice tackle here by Brad Cochran, number 30. Uh, had he not made that tackle, uh, Rodney Carter might still be running. Everett looking. Incomplete, intended for Carter at the 45, but there's a flag down back at the 30-yard line. And it may be uh, an illegal block. Blocking below the waist, waist I believe that is the signal. Or maybe signal. blocking on a forward pass. I don't think you're allowed to block downfield before the e line when the pass was thrown. Let's see on the replay. A big one. Now we got a different signal that time. 
The initial signal was an illegal block. Well, it was an illegal block, but he gave us two different penalties. I think it was for blocking uh, below the waist. Nevertheless, it has cost the Purdue Boilermakers. Purdue now looking at a first and 39 as the ball has been moved all the way back to the 15 yard line. 29 yards away from the line of scrimmage. That's, that's a big penalty. Reinhold uh, into the ball game, replacing Billy Harris at middle guard for the Wolverines. First and 39 for Purdue. The ball at its own 15 yard line. Everett under the center has a flanker wide to the right, being chased. Bang! Down he goes. Jeff Akers came roaring in from the left side and dropped Everett all the way back to the five yard line. Akers just came roaring through. The senior from Lynn Mass may not even have been touched. And this is the type of thing you can do when you've got an offense in a situation like first and 39. You can blitz. That's why it's imperative that you gain yardage on first down. You know, like when you have first and 10, you want to pick up three, four yards, so you can't let the defense do different things to you like this. It was a simple stunt. Jeff Akers, number 33, came in untouched and tackles uh, Jim Everett for another loss. And now it's second down and 48. The pitch going back to Carter reverses his field. Still not much running room. Gets out to the five. There's a flag down back at the five-yard line. Carter got out to about the 12, and Akers made the tackle. Let's see what this infraction might be. Offside against Michigan. That will make it second down and 43, <laughs> which is still quite a long way to go. Two minutes and four seconds remain in the opening half. Michigan leads at 21 to nothing. And the uh, statistics that Purdue has accumulated over the course of the season, resulting in 482 yards total offense, which is number one in the nation, uh, number one in the Big Ten and number two in the nation, is going to take a heck of a beating after this first half. Bill Burtnett wondering what's happening out there. Not much in the way of offensive performance for his boilers. A minute 54 left in the opening half, and Purdue resumes the shotgun with Jackson flanked wide to the right. Everett back to the goal line. Throws to the far side, in and out of the hands of two players. Carter had a shot at it, squirted through his fingertips, and Scarcelli had a crack in an interception, and, and he let it get away from him. Yeah, he had a shot at a touchdown, and uh, I'm sure he'll be thinking about that at least the rest of the game and probably most of the night. So that'll be a third down and 43 yards to go. Here's another look. You'll see Rodney Carter, number 24, the outstanding uh, uh, receiver for Purdue, lets this one get away. It's really a catchable football, and uh, he didn't bring it in and, and tuck it away, but number 85... Jim Scarcelli, the senior from Warren, Michigan, had a shot at six points. One of the few times a defensive player will have a chance to score a touchdown on an interception. Everett again back to throw. Forced out of the pocket. Comes to the near side. Now he's going to have to run. He's out to the 20. Cuts back to his right at the 25. Still out to 30. And to the 31-yard line. Garland Rivers made the tackle on Everett, which gets Purdue out of some deep trouble but nevertheless they're looking at a long long situation in terms of going for the first down Michigan is coming to the near sideline as a result of the official timeout call Everett has lost 12 yards trying to throw the ball he has been well, actually, he's picked up 13 as a result of that brush because well, he was, I think, minus 25 before. Now, Michigan has been assessed the timeout. And it'll be a fourth down and 24 for the Purdue Boilermakers. Eric Campbell has gone back in anticipation of the punt. 
there's been a little bit of mix up down there. The official gave the indication that it was an official's timeout to stop the clock for just a moment for an adjustment. And then Michigan called timeout. And Purdue headed to the far sidelines. You take a look at the near sidelines as uh, one of the Wolverines is being attended to. Tomorrow, it'll be our first college basketball game of the season here on pro -Am Sports as the Czech Nationals take on Judd Heathcote's Michigan State Spartans. We'll have it for you live on pro -Am Sports beginning at 7.30 tomorrow evening. Hope you'll be able to join us. A low line drive kick comes to the near sideline and out of bounds at the 31. I'll tell you, this young fella, Ernie Schrammeyer, has had a tough afternoon in the punting department. He came in with a 38-yard average and a long kick of 66, but he just hasn't been able to get it done here today. So Michigan has a minute and seven seconds to see if the Wolverines could get more on the board before the halftime arrives. 21 to nothing. The uh, Michigans are leading at the moment, and they'll have the ball on their own 31-yard line with Jokic split to the right, and Kolazar flanked to the left. Five-man front shown by Purdue as Harbaugh takes a look. Harbaugh pitching back to Morris. Morris needs a block to turn the corner and just doesn't get it. Kolazar was out there trying to deliver it. Could not, and Morris was run out of bounds at around the 35 or 6-yard line. We'll see where they spot the ball. Morris has carried the ball eight times for 46 yards in this first half. They'll spot it at the 37-yard line. Gain of six. Second and four for Michigan. It's hard to tell whether or not Michigan is interested in getting back in the into uh, and trying to get another touchdown or get in uh, field position for a field goal running on first down. Perhaps they thought that uh, they could cross up Purdue and get a big gainer from Jeremy Morris on that first down play. It's second down and four on the draw. Not much there for Morris who has dropped at the 35 yard line. Well, the element of surprise may have been the design but did not work as Matt Morgan made the tackle on Jamie Morris and now with 45 seconds left in the half and the clock running Michigan has it third and six Colazar wide to the right Jokic split to the left that's the short side Harbaugh back to throw on third down he's, he's throwing open. long he's, he's got open. Colazar he's got it to touchdown pass to the freshman from Westlake, Ohio, John Colazar, and the Wolverines lead it 27 to nothing. And another big play by John Colazar. What happens here, a lot of times, because of the two rushes that we saw uh, by Michigan, the defense really went to sleep, and they let Colazar get deep, and Harbaugh hits him, and he's got great speed. He's got four receptions for 147 yards and two TDs. What a great afternoon John Colazar, the freshman from Westlake, Ohio, is having. Now Gillette will attempt to put the 28th point on the board for the Wolverines. The snap, the spot, the kick, and it is good. And with 25 seconds left in the opening half at Michigan Stadium, the Wolverines have opened a 28 to nothing lead with John Colazar receiving congratulations from his mates on their sideline. He's having a career day. And you know, we talked about the first two plays, Larry, on that particular drive, and it didn't appear like Michigan was just going to run out the clock. And the defense reacted that way. They actually went to sleep, let Colazar get deep, Harbaugh hits him, and that's the third third play three play drive uh, for a touchdown this afternoon the statistics being accumulated by Jim Harbaugh may rival those accumulated at the expense of the Indiana Hoosiers if he has a second half comparable to that of the first Harbaugh what? this afternoon is 11 for 12 for 223 yards in the first half and you'll see here that the defense was really lulled to sleep they were up in coverage 
didn't even react to the possibility of a pass play because they were well up uh, toward the line of scrimmage and Colazar beats him deep. Harbaugh puts the ball in the money and another six points for the Wolverines. A three play drive covering 69 yards needing just 42 seconds. The 65 yard touchdown pass from Harbaugh to Colazar and the Wolverines lead it by a score of 28 to nothing. Now the kickoff by Sutkowitz is rather short fielded at the 12 yard line and carried out to the 25 yard line. Now Rob Woodson returns it to the 25 where it'll be a first down with 21 seconds remaining in the opening half. We mentioned uh, the 223 yards for Harbaugh in the first half. The Michigan record for passing is 283 established by Harbaugh against Indiana in a game seen earlier on Pro-Am Sports. And we've got whistles and uh, mix up and we may have uh, found well, apparently the clock on the scoreboard uh, was in error because that is the end of the first half and you can see the scoreboard clock is still running it down. So it was a very impressive show by both sides of the Michigan unit. Offensive show provided by Harbaugh and company. And it was a tremendous effort by Mike Hammerstein and Mark Mesner and company on the defensive side of the ball. And the Wolverines have a commanding 28 to nothing lead over Purdue at halftime. We'll be back with more, so please stay with us. You're watching Pro-Am Sports. Opportunity to score th those three play drives. We, we noted that they had three three play drives uh, in the first half. Two of them were a direct result of the two turnovers giving Michigan good field position. The first one led to Michigan's first touchdown, a fumbled putt by the Wolverines. Uh, by the. Uh, well, we're going to look directly at the touchdown here. And that was just an excellent throw. I can't tell you what a great throw that was by Jim Harbaugh. He had just led Eric Caddis uh, enough. You'll see here, you won't be able to tell when the ball, I'll try to tell you when he throws. He's throwing the ball now. It's gone. The ball is already gone. And that tries to show you how long the ball was in the air, but great loss uh, on the, on the uh, pass by Jim Harbaugh. Excellent catch by Eric Caddis. Once again, he lets the ball go early, and uh, Colazar comes across on the post pattern, does a nice job of catching the ball and then getting it into the end zone. Colazar's having an outstanding uh, first half. I think he's got two touchdown passes, and who knows how many yards receiving. 148, four catches, 148 yards, and two TDs. Well, Michigan's first touchdown came as a result of the fumbled punt recovery by Michigan. The Wolverines moved right downfield, and you see Harbaugh winning the battle of quarterbacks here this afternoon. The kickoff by Purdue sailed into the end zone. This is the first play from scrimmage in the third quarter, and Morris carries for about three, possibly four yards. Tony Visco made the tackle. Now, I anticipate Michigan in this uh, first series of the second half to basically work on their running game. They've got a 28-yard, a 28-point lead, and I don't expect them to throw unless they're put in a situation where they have to. They might just want to work on the rushing game. The Wolverines in the first half rushed for 53 yards but threw for 225. It's second down and six. Flanker wide to the right is Colazar. We're getting a mist hanging over the field now. Morris goes to the 27-yard line as fog is starting to move in and it's covering the entire horizon. And it's getting very foggy over Michigan Stadium. Chris Dishman made the tackle after the ball had been advanced to the 28-yard line. You can see on the horizon how that fog is moving in. Jimmy Morris has now picked up 56 yards and 10 carries. I don't suppose the Dennis Franklin portable lighting system is in the area, <laughs> so I light this field up today. Third down and three. Harbaugh rolling to his right. Is going to run, gets to the 30, and looks like he got the first down. He was driven out of bounds. This will depend expressly on the mark. He's got it. It is a first down. 
You mentioned that Colazar had 148 yards in pass receptions on four, the long one being a 65-yard touchdown pass. Jokic caught one for 38, Canis a pair for 26. Purdue's leading receiver was Carter, who caught five for 54 yards. Wallace hauled in two for 20 yards. Wolverines picking up a, a first down in their first possession have moved the ball outside the 30-yard line. Jokic split left in. Kulazar flanker to the left. And Morris gets 5, 6, 7, 10 out to the 41-yard line. Another first down for Michigan. As Weaver made the tackle on Jamie Morris and what you predicted the, appears to be the case as the Wolverines keep it on the ground. This is a quick hitter, and what happens, there's an option play off of this particular action, but Jamie Morris does a good job of hitting up in there quickly and uh, runs very, very hard. And you see uh, Weaver, Mike Weaver, number nine, the uh, junior from Pasadena, California, make the tackle. Okay, split to the short side. That's the right side. White breaks free across the 50 inside Purdue territory to the 44-yard line, where Fred Strickland hauled him down. A quick burst of speed by Gerald White, and suddenly he had some running room. And it's another first down for the Wolverines. They're showing a great ground game here in the third quarter. Quick hitter inside by White makes a fine cutback there, and uh, was well blocked and good penetration or good explosiveness, good explosion off the uh, offensive line. And uh, Gerald White picks up another first down. The third first down here in the third quarter for the Wolverines. It took the opening kickoff to get the second half started and have marched, marched, marched. Here's Morris, and he's inside the 40 to the 38-yard line, and it was Strickland again. He's going to get a good, nice rest this evening. He's been a busy man. He's a junior from Pasadena, California. He'll undoubtedly be a viewer of the postseason play this year. Morris has carried 12 times, has accumulated 73 yards, his career high, 179 against Indiana. Colazar is wide to the left on second and four. And Jokic is split to the right. Wolverines can do just about anything they so choose now on second and short, but there's the movement on the right side of the line. And it looked like it was Jeff Elliott, it's John Elliott rather, that started too quickly. And the Wolverines will be hit with a five-yarder. So that slows the progress uh, for the moment anyway. And rather than the second down and four, Michigan will be taking a look at a second and nine. And this perhaps will force Michigan into a pass, but uh, you know, we, we basically anticipated them to keep the football on the ground and just rush, uh, at least in this uh, beginning uh, series, uh, in the second half. But now with, with the penalty and facing uh, second and nine, I wouldn't be surprised if they try a pass. Jokic split to the right. That's the short side of the field. Kolazar is flanked to the left, the long side. Five men up front for Purdue. Harbaugh straight back the throw, throws to the near side, and it's caught at the 35-yard line. A diving catch, I believe that's Jokic that made the reception at the 35, short of the first down by about a yard. It was not Jokic, it was Jeff Brown that made the reception. Mike Weaver made the tackle. Jeff, Jeff Brown, uh, the freshman, number 80, out of uh, Shaker Heights, Ohio, comes on the crossing pattern. It was a low throw, but he did a nice job of getting down underneath the ball and making the reception. It will be short, though, Larry. Uh, it, it will... Uh, put Michigan in a third down and one situation. On third down conversions, the Boilermakers and Wolverines in the first half each converted once. Not a very high percentage for either team. Colazar needs a block. He's going to have to do it on his own and does. He just plowed forward to the 32-yard line and got the first down as Tom Wilcher looks like provided the, the big key. It's a bad read here by Wilshire. He should have gone inside. You'll see great penetration at the top right there by 23, Kennedy Wilson. And instead of going outside, he should have cut inside. It would have made it a lot easier on him, but he picked it up anyway. Well, at the 32-yard line, where it's another first down for the Wolverines, who apparently have not let that five-yard penalty stall this drive. 
Pitch back to Wiltshire, running to his right. Finds a seam. He's at the 30, 35 on his feet, 20, and out of bounds he goes. At the 19 or 18-yard line, Gerald White was out in front of him. Wiltshire following it beautifully. Gets another first down for Michigan. Wilshire this time, you, as you look at him on isolation, he'll do a nice job of running. Cutting inside the block number, by number 22, Gerald White, and then cutting back outside, and then running hard, breaking a couple of tackles. And he picked up good yardage, enough for a first down for Michigan. Noticed on that last carry, perhaps uh, he has done so before, but Wilshire is wearing gloves. He is the only back or in wearing gloves here this afternoon. First and ten for the Wolverines. With time to throw him and he's down to the 11-yard line. Strickland again on the tackle of Bob Perriman, the junior from Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts. And Wiltshire, who had been carrying the ball, this time plowed the path. It'll be second down, about three yards to go, a long three, as you see Bo Schembechler on the near side. Wolverine's drive started at the 20-yard line, and they've overcome a five-yard penalty to keep the drive alive. And this has been 10 plays already, Larry, the longest drive of the afternoon. Jokic split to the right, Kolazar wide to the left, Wiltshire. Cuts back against the grain to the five, and he's down to the four-yard line, another first down for Michigan. Horner made the tackle, but too late for the first down to be saved. And we have a Purdue player down at the 13-yard line. It's Fred Strickland, number 48, the outstanding linebacker for Purdue, who's down, Larry. He is their leading tackler coming into this football game. This is only a sophomore out of Ringwood, New Jersey. They can ill afford, as we said before, to lose him. He's such a fine tackler. Nine minutes and three seconds remain in the third quarter. Michigan leading it by a score of 28 to nothing. And the Wolverines are putting together an impressive drive. You'll see Vitale come around and make a good block there. Number 67 and Wolshire puts his head down and runs hard and picks up very good yardage on that particular play. I felt that he should have cut outside, but every time I tell him which way to go, he goes the other way and makes a first down or whatever anyway, so it doesn't matter. It's the sixth first down of this drive for Michigan. All have been accumulated in the rushing game. It'll be first and goal for Michigan at the four-yard line. Perryman is into the ball game as the fullback. Wilcher remains as the tailback. Kolazar is a wing to the right with a pair of tight ends. Harbaugh at the line of scrimmage gives to Wilcher, sticks his head down and drives to about the two-yard line. Sumlin came up to make the tackle on Thomas Wilcher, who's gotten a good deal of action here in this drive, replacing Jamie Morris, who had a big first half for the Wolverines. And it's really a, a nice thing for uh, Michigan, and I'm sure Paul Schembechler, Beckler, to have the kind of depth where he can use a Tom Wilcher uh, in the second half and not lose anything in terms of speed, uh, strength, and uh, quickness uh, with his second string back and still move the ball right down the field and they've, they've basically rushed 99% uh, in the second half so far. Again, it's Wilcher, touchdown Michigan! Thomas Wilcher, a junior from Detroit Central. Ups the count to 34 to nothing, an 80-yard Michigan touchdown drive. Just a nice run off tackle. It's well blocked. You can see there nobody even touches him until number 19, Chris Dishman, does. And it was too late for him because he was already at the goal line. Nice hard running and a, a very impressive uh, running drive by Michigan on the opening series of the second half. Mike Gillette will try for the extra point. Robbins will spot the ball at the 10, the snap, the spot, the kick is good. And it is now 35 to nothing. Michigan leading Purdue in what had been anticipated, a game that would provide some scoring, but on both sides of the scoreboard. Very true, uh, Larry. Uh, we knew that the Michigan defense was a tough one because they came in here ranked 
number one nationally against the score, averaging or giving up only 6.3 points, 6.3 points per game, and second in uh, total defense, giving up 263 yards. But we never would have imagined them shutting out Purdue, and they've done that so far. It probably would have been a very important thing for Purdue to shut down Michigan early in the third quarter after trailing 28 nothing. That didn't happen. They've got a real problem now. And I really think, Larry, and I've told you this before, that that is the most important series in football. When you come out to start the second half, that first series is the one that sets the tone for the, the rest of the football game. And if Purdue, like you said, would have been able to stop Michigan, then it would give them an advantage to get back into this football game. But the way it went for Michigan, now they're in total control, and I anticipate them to just go ahead and continue to blow out Purdue in the second half. Wolverines needed a dozen plays to travel the 80 yards and score at the 804 mark of the third period to lead it by a score of 35 to nothing. It was the first long sustained Michigan drive of the afternoon. Woodson and Wallace are the deep men standing at the two yard line as Rick Sutkowitz kicks it off for the Wolverines and hangs short on the left side of the field takes a high hop and will go out of bounds and will do it over again. about the only thing that has gone wrong for the Wolverines this afternoon. Sutkowicz has kicked two kickoffs out of bounds and Gillette missed a field goal in his first attempt but everything else has been a Perfect. big plus. Yep. Michigan had six first downs on this pass drive. Purdue had six first downs the entire first half. I'd like to thank Jim Schneider, who is doing his usual superb job in providing statistics for us again this afternoon. It's always important to have someone that can get the job done accurately and quickly, and we appreciate Jimmy's work. Makes it sound intelligent. <laughs> well, I don't know if it goes that far. <laughs> It's getting a little bit on the cool side as a little bit of a mist is falling now and the temperature is dropping in Ann Arbor. Another short kickoff comes down to the 10-yard line, taken by Woodson, brings it to the 20, gets out to the 25, and he is spilled at the 26-yard line. Seven minutes, 59 seconds left in the third quarter in Michigan with a commanding 35 to nothing lead over Purdue. You look at uh, Mr. Woodson, catch the football, turns it right upfield, gets perhaps the best field position for Purdue so far this afternoon out to the 26 yard line. Mark Jackson comes wide to the left. Split to the right is Griffin. They really not have been factors in this game, and big pressure again unloaded, and it's caught at the 29 yard line. Hit immediately by Ivan Hicks. Mike Mallory was there, and Wallace didn't go anyplace following the reception. And it'll be just short of the 30-yard line, a gain of three. Second down and seven. You'll see here tremendous pressure by the defensive line. They've done it all the first half. Mike Hammerstein there coming in, being double teamed, but it doesn't matter. On the following play, Everett drilled one into the midsection at the 32-yard line. And uh, Akers made the tackle, but it was a quick gain out to the 32 is where it's spotted. And it'll be third down and uh, three. Larry Perdue has decided to go to the two-minute offense. They're going without a huddle, and Everett is just calling plays at the line of scrimmage. Caught by Wallace, a diving catch at the 35, but short of a first down by about a yard. Very poor play that time by Ray Wallace. He did not realize where he was on the football field Otherwise, he could have caught that ball and run for the first down. Instead, he figured that he had already gone beyond the uh, first down marker, so he just cradled it and assumed that he had the first down, and he would, and he was short. Schrammeyer will uh, do the punting at the 22-yard line. Ernie Schrammeyer gets it away, and it's a boomer. Campbell has to go all the way back to his 13-yard line. Runs parallel to the stripes. 
Needs a block to turn the corner. Doesn't get it. And he is filled at the 20-yard line. He got a couple of good blocks, but uh, he didn't get to the so-called picket line. Came up a little short there, but he, he got a couple of great blocks by his uh, fellow football players. Sure, he would have liked to have gotten to the line because he had plenty of running room. Chris Zerbrug has come into the ball game. He will be operating at quarterback now following a sensational first half by the starter Jim Harbaugh and a great 80-yard drive put together by Harbaugh and his mates to open the third period. Perryman and Wiltshire in the backfield with Chris, a sophomore from Alliance, Ohio. 6.20 left in the third quarter. Pitch back to Wiltshire. He's hit behind the line, stays on his feet, out to about the 21-yard line. Chris Dishman made the tackle. Dishman ha has had to have come up with some big plays this afternoon. He's made some fine tackles, and uh, that's just another example of his ability to come up and try to tackle the back uh, for a loss. But uh, Tom Wilshire, with his strong running ability, just kind of bounced off and picked up an, ad an additional three, four yards. Wolverines come to the line of scrimmage. They have Jokic split to the left. Kolazar flanked to the right. He's in motion to the long side of the field. Zerbrug gives it to Perryman. Struggles across the 25 out to the 27-yard line. May have reached. Now well, that's where it is, the 27. Morgan made the tackle for Purdue. Well, we'll have to utilize Dennis Franklin's photographic mind if this game continues as is because I think it's going to be meet the team day here at Michigan <laughs> Stadium. <laughs> Well, I think it's a very good move on the part of uh, Bo Schembechler and the offensive court coaches to get Chris Zerbrug in the football uh, game now uh, to give him a chance to uh, get some playing uh, experience. Uh, we all recall that uh, he took over for uh, Jim Harbaugh last year when Harbaugh was injured, but uh, he hasn't played a whole lot this season yet, and uh, it's important for him to get some game time playing experience. Perryman with great initiative on his own part carries for the first down I believe across the 30 Visco made the tackle they have not yet spotted the ball it will be at the 31 yard line and it is indeed a first down for the Wolverines you'll see Perryman go off tackle here take the handoff from Zerbrug follow his blocking up into the middle and he's very determined to uh, get as much yardage as possible he got the three plus that was needed for the first down. Perryman operating at fullback. Wilcher carries the mail. Big hole is across the 40, 50, and it's hauled out from behind at the 45-yard line by Rod Woodson, who saved the touchdown gallop by Thomas Wilcher. But he's hurt. He's down. It was a tough tackle that came from behind, and he may have... Now we won't speculate. You could see as he was going down, the uh, tackler kind of pulled him back, and I don't know what resulted in terms of the injury, but you can see there the explosiveness that this man possesses. He is very, very quick, and he just busted right through the line of scrimmage, and right here is where he gets hurt, oh, on his ankle. That's, it's either his ankle or his knee, but you could see where it was bent back by Rod Woodson, number 26. It was on the tackle where he was injured, and you see here he's about to grab his ankle or his knee. Just hope he's uh, okay. Boy, a tough thing to happen for the young fellow who's been getting some real running time here this afternoon. Has responded beautifully, and after a brilliant dash for a first down into the Purdue Boilermakers territory, is forced to leave the game as a result of the injury. They've spotted the ball at the 45-yard line. They're getting a little bit deeper into the backfield. Phil Webb is in now. He's a sophomore from Romeo. He is playing a tailback slot now. He's the third man to run out of that fourth, actually, with White alternating there this afternoon. On the keeper, Zerbrug inside the 40, and he is upended at the 39-yard line. Rod Woodson came up and made the tackle on the young sophomore quarterback. And it'll be second down and uh, three yards to go for the first down. 
Chris Zerbrug on this particular play, Larry, is just a bit anxious, and it's understandable, but he does a good job of faking down and coming down the line of scrimmage to run the option. But if he waits right there on uh, Jokic, number 84, to make the block, he's got a touchdown. Well, that all comes with playing time, and that's what he's getting here this afternoon. Colazar is flanked to the left. It's Perryman. He's got a seam. He's across the 35, down to the 33-yard line. Sumlin made the tackle on Bob Perryman. Three minutes, 20 seconds left in the third quarter here at Michigan Stadium. Wolverines lead it 35 to nothing. They marched 80 yards in their first possession here in the third quarter. And following the exchange, have moved right downfield from their own 20-yard line to the 33 in Purdue territory. First down, big edge now for the Wolverines, 18 to 6. Zerbrug gives to Perryman, and uh, there's a tremendous collision when he hit the line of scrimmage. Dropped at the 31-yard line. You may have heard the pop in the background. So Perryman picks up just one. That will be second down and nine. It's the first time in this series that the Wolverines haven't picked up big yardage on the first down play. Michigan's with nine first downs in the third quarter. They had nine in the first half. And that's why it's expanded to that huge advantage now over the Boilermakers in that statistic. Jokic split to the right. Golazar flanked to the left. Zerbrug turns, makes the handoff, back to throw, going for Jokic, can't get it. A good defensive play made by Mike Weaver, who is downfield with Jokic. Tipped it away, Paul couldn't get to it, and you can see that Mike Weaver is very happy with what he has just done. Bit of a surprise by Michigan going for the pass play, but why not give Chris uh, Zerberg the same opportunity to complete a big pass, so they go for it, and you'll see here that uh, <laughs> I thought Jokic did a good job of turning into the defender and uh, not allowing number nine, uh, Mike Weaver, to come up with the interception. He was well covered. Weaver was complaining a little about it. He thought maybe there was offensive pass. Oh, yeah. Purdue may have recovered it. And uh, then again, maybe the whistle had sounded prior to the fumble. It was very dangerous for a moment. It was a big mix-up as Webb didn't handle it, bounced around a little bit, and uh, you say the play was blown dead, apparently. Or well, did they? You can't really blame Phil Webb, who was the option back on that particular play. The mistake was really made by the quarterback, Zerbrook, who should never have pitched that ball because Webb was 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 covered when you when you come down the line of scrimmage on the option play you don't pitch back to a guy who's already covered what you do is you eat the ball and cut up inside and that's where the mistake is made it'll be fourth down for michigan and robbins is in to punt woodson is back on his own 10 yard line for the boilers good snap robbins aiming for the far sideline and it goes out of bounds on the far side, but at the 15-yard line. So the Boilermakers will take over on their 15 with a minute five left in the third quarter. The Wolverines leading it by a score of 35 to nothing. Well, a big howdy from the Michigan Wolverine fans here at Ann Arbor Stadium to all of you viewers on Pro-Am Sports. They've had a good time this afternoon as the Wolverines have dominated this game throughout. Sixty-five seconds left in the third quarter as Purdue huddles back at the five-yard line. Comes to the line of scrimmage with Steve Griffin coming wide to the left. As a flanker, they have Jackson set as a split left end. Everett to quarterback. Back to throw. To the side it comes, and it's incomplete, intended for Mark Jackson. Jim Scarcelli was right there. It went right through the uh, outstretched hands of Jackson, and I believe between his legs, and fell harmlessly to the turf. Jackson was the third leading receiver for Purdue coming into this football game, and uh, by the looks of this pass, he really should have caught it, 
A nice throw, I thought. It's a little low, but uh, no excuse for not really catching that football. He saw Scarcelli coming. May have attracted a bit of his attention. Pass in completed. Intended for Steve Griffin at the 35-yard line. While the statistics for Jim Everett may not be overwhelming this afternoon, it is not all his fault. That's Tremendous true. pressure applied by the Wolverines, plus the fact there have been some catchable balls that have been dropped. That's very true, and it shows a lack of character, I think, when a guy like Steve Griffin on a particular play like that comes back after another receiver has dropped the ball, and he drops the ball. I'd, I'd be very upset if I was a quarterback. Jackson flank wide to the left. Everett in trouble, fumble the ball that is picked up by Tyree, and he carries out to the 15-yard line. The left guard for the Purdue Boilermakers picked off the fumble, kept the possession for the Boilermakers, but only for a down. Well, uh, Jim Everett can't really blame a whole lot of people but himself on this particular play. Once again, it was excellent pressure by Mesner, Mark Mesner, number 60. The ball is fumbled. Todd, Ty, Todd Tyree comes up with it. The uh, freshman from uh, Lafayette, Indiana, and he advances it a couple of yards. Wolverines going after it, and it's going to be a safety. Wolverines had everybody up on the line of scrimmage. It was a low snap, mishandled by the putter, Ernie Schrammeyer, who's had a tough afternoon, and Arnold went in to nail him. A two-point safety, and the Wolverines now lead 37 to nothing. Well, if this were a basketball game, Bo Schembechler may be sitting on the bench with the legs crossed, but it's not, and he'll be very animated through the balance of this contest. Oh, about everything that could go wrong for Purdue has gone wrong, some of its own making, a lot of it because of the Wolverines' prowess. This is true. Their defense has just been outstanding, uh, Larry, and uh, they continue to get great penetration from their defensive linemen. Uh, Mark Mesner and Mike Hammerstein continually are in the uh, backfield of Purdue, and uh, when you've got players uh, from the opposing team uh, across that line of scrimmage and in your own backfield, you, you can't expect much success. Purdue will now have a free kick from the 20-yard line. Michigan sending Colazar and Morris back to the 20-yard line, and they're moving up about five yards. They'll have to be sort of directed by the uh, coaching staff on exactly where to set themselves because this is not something you see every day. It'll be punted by Schraumeyer, who's had a, a brutal afternoon. Big hop taken by Morris. Out of the 35, 40, and down he goes at the 47-yard line. It looked for a moment as it opened up through the middle that they may have a chance to go another 20 or 30. Foster, however, made the tackle on Morris, and the Wolverines will have great field position to begin operations late in this third quarter. Uh, Morris gets a real true bounce here. I thought he made a mistake by not going up and handling it in the air, but he got the good bounce, made a great cut, and accelerated right up the middle and picked up good yardage for Michigan. There are only seven seconds remaining in this third quarter. Morris is in at tailback. Higgins is a wide receiver to the right. Cochran in motion. Zerbrug lost the ball, and I believe well, it squirts away again, and Michigan may have recovered. Purdue had it for just a split second. It squirted away, and then was recovered by Michigan at the 45-yard line. A missed fire between the uh, center and quarterback on the snap. The ball goes right through Zerbrug's hands. You're taught as a quarterback that when you take that snap, you're supposed to put it into your third pocket, which is your stomach. You're supposed to bring the arms in close to your body so that if you mishandle the snap, the control from your stomach will allow you not to fumble it, and it will stay close enough to you that you don't fumble the ball. That time it got entirely away from Zerbrug, and really, Purdue should have picked up the fumble recovery. Tabacino recovered it for Michigan. The Wolverines still have possession. The third period has expired. It's 37 to nothing, Michigan. We'll be back with the fourth quarter in just a moment on Pro-Am Sports. ...at Michigan Stadium and it's getting very, very dark here in Ann Arbor. 
Zerbrug back to throw. Looks long. He's throwing long. Campbell, it's overthrown at the 15-yard line. We're just talking while we're away at the break, and we must compliment our technical crew. As you look at the picture that you're seeing of this football game, it would not indicate that we have a very dark afternoon. We're still getting a very crisp, clean picture from our technical people. We appreciate that. If you were looking at it as we are looking at it, I'm telling you, it's, it's dark. dark. <laughs> <laughs> it's very dark. <laughs> well, take a look at that. That tells you a little something of what happened in the third quarter as Michigan continued to dominate the game. Zerbrug throws to the far side and is caught beautifully by Eric Campbell, who spun to the turf at the 42, but it's another first down. They'll spun it at the 41-yard line, and the Wolverines keep it going. I wanted to comment on that last throw by Zerbrug. He just didn't lay the ball out uh, enough for Campbell to, to run up under it on the deep play. But on this particular play, he gunned it out to his uh, fine wide receiver, Eric Campbell, the uh, sophomore from Gary, Indiana. But, you know, as we look down on the field, Larry, it's probably very difficult for the receivers to see the ball that's so dark down there. It's like playing at dusk. There's no question about it. And before it's over, it might be like playing at night. First and ten for the Wolverines. White going to the outside, breaks through, he's at the 30, and he is bulldog down at the 25-yard line as Rob Woodson went up on his shoulders and cracked him down, but it is another first down, but there is a flag thrown, and it'll be a penalty against Michigan. Gerald Wright going off tackle right, gets a fine block from Vitali, his uh, great guard, number 67, and then breaks the tackle turns on the speed down the down the uh, sideline and uh, Woodson had to come up with a, a good effort in order to stop Gerald White. It's an illegal use of the hands a holding call against the Wolverines moves the ball back to the Michigan territory at the 49. 14 23 left to be played in this ball game. Michigan leads at 37 to nothing. Campbell comes off the field. We'll check his replacement in just a moment. Johnson has come in. He's the wide receiver to the left for the Wolverines. Higgins is set as a slot left. Zerbrug over the middle, and it is incomplete. A couple of guys had a shot at it. None could hold it. And it'll bring up second down. This copyrighted telecast is by the authority of the University of Michigan and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our past subscribers. Any use or reproduction of this broadcast without the express written consent of Pro-Am Sports is strictly prohibited. Eric Campbell has gone back into the ball game for the Wolverines to be operating as a wide receiver when Michigan comes to the line of scrimmage with a second and 20. Higgins stays in the ball game. He is a split right end. And Campbell is flanked to the left. Zerbrug checks out a five-man front with the two linebackers up tight on the draw. Hands off. Webb carries it to about the 30, make it the 44-yard line. Chris Dishman made the tackle. Thirteen forty-two left in this ball game. Michigan leading 37 to nothing. The Wolverines will expand their record to 7-1-1 one one overall and 4-1-1 one one in the Big Ten and uh, stay alive in the race for the Big Ten title. The Wolverines must go to Minnesota next week, and then it's the battle with the Buckeyes that close it out. Bill Webb in the tailback spot, a spot now for Michigan. Fakes to Webb. Zerbrug throws to the far sideline. And it's the far side. A beautiful catch by Higgins. Out of bounds at the 15. Another first down for Michigan. Higgins showing a little acrobatic skills as he zoomed down to the far sideline, went up and grabbed it. Another first down for Michigan. And a great throw this time by Chris Zerbrug. He comes back, looks off of his primary receiver, goes back to uh, Ken Higgins, number 31, the junior from Battle Creek, Michigan. He threw the ball over Chris Dishman and uh, before uh, 26 Woodson, and uh, it was an excellent throw, a gain of 40 yards on the pass play. And another first down at the 15-yard line. White carries to the outside. He's at the 10, and he is shot out of bounds. Nope, he stays inbounds before. And it's at the 9-yard line. 
He hit the turf before going out of bounds. The clock continues to run. 12.55 left. Either that or the referees yeah. want to go home as badly as <laughs> me too. <laughs> a lot of the uh, faithful are headed for the exits. So I can guarantee you that. Uh, a lot of this crowd of 105,000 has headed on out to see if they can beat darkness. Johnson is into the ball game now for the Wolverines, and he comes wide to the left. He's a flanker with Higgins to split left end. It's second down and three for Michigan at the nine-yard line in Purdue territory. Wolverines again knocking on the door. White cuts back. He's in the five. He has stopped at the two, but a flag is down. Gerald White showing some fine running up the middle, but we'll have a holding call against Michigan, and that'll cost them the game. Plus, they'll tack on the penalty yardage and make it a little bit tougher as they try to increase this 37 0 lead. Once again, Gerald White coming up with a fine effort. He's had a good uh, afternoon of rushing for Michigan. Um, Michigan on that particular play committed their 11th penalty for 75 yards but you'll see a fine piece of running here by number 22 the junior from Titusville Florida cuts up the middle cuts back and then decides to go right between two guys and there's the flag good strong hard running by Gerald White it's second down and 13 now Zerbra rolls to the left going to the end zone it was intended for Higgins, but tipped away by Chris Dishman. And it'll present a third and 13 for the Wolverines. The ball at the 18-yard line. Very nice throw by Zerbrug on the run to his left. Gets the shoulders turned. Throws a bullet. But uh, had it not been for the excellent coverage by number 19, you'll see right there to tip the ball away. They had a shot at another six points. Dishman's made some fine plays for a sophomore and a, a backup man, actually. He's not a starter in the secondary. Uh, he's uh, lined up behind Rod Woodson, and I think because of an injury, Woodson has gone inside, and, and uh, Dishman is now starting on the corner. Dishman, a sophomore from Louisville, Kentucky, 6 feet, 165. The Wolverines have called timeout. Higgins, incidentally, an outstanding student with a 3.9 grade average. He was, uh, has been nominated to the Academic All-America, All-Big Ten team this season. 11.54 left to be played. 37 to nothing, Michigan leading the Boilers. It'll be third and 13 when play resumes. Clay Miller has come out of the ball game on the offensive front line for the Wolverines. Check his replacement. You see Vitale, Elliott, Tabuccino. They've been in there most of the afternoon. Mike Krause. 75 uh, corner is the replacement. Third down 13 from the 18 yard line. Zerbrug has Higgins split to the right. He's back to throw. Looks, throws to the far side, and it's almost intercepted. It was intended for Jeff Brown, but almost picked off. That'll bring up fourth and 13, and Mike Gillette comes into the ball game. Wolverines will try for points number 38, 9, and 40. As you can see, the weather has deteriorated here. But you and I both know and have been involved in weather much worse than this, this on an true. early November afternoon. Thank you. Here's the kick, a 36-yard attempt, and it's good. The Mike Gillette, who missed an earlier attempt today, drills this one through, and Michigan has moved in front now by 40. 40 to nothing. Michigan leading the Purdue Boilermakers with 11.45 left in the final quarter. Well, Chris Zerbrug, who has come on in relief of Jim Harbaugh, who had a great first half and a fine start of the third quarter, has himself had a very fine afternoon. That's right, Larry. He's moved the team very effectively. 
Uh, he's got them in for, uh, I think this is their second uh, scoring drive, maybe just their first. But he has moved the football effectively, and that's very important uh, for Michigan to uh, show some depth at, at the quarterback position. Michigan's kickoff team still on the near sideline. Purdue has been deployed in anticipation of this kickoff. The 11:45 remain to be played. The Michigan Wolverines have two shutouts for their credit this season, blanking Maryland to 20 to nothing and Michigan State 31 to nothing, and they have shut out Purdue thus far 40 to nothing. It's an incredible statistic in that. The Wolverines have allowed just two touchdowns this all year. season. It's amazing. Rick Sutkowitz prepares to kick off. He's been getting a lot of work in this category this afternoon. And you know what's even more amazing is the fact that they've only allowed two touchdowns, but yet they've lost a game and they tied a game. Now that is unbelievable. Yeah. Woodson and Wallace are the deep men as Sutkowitz gets ready to kick with 11.45 left in the game. Long to the end zone. Out of the end zone. And we brought out to the 20-yard line. So Sutkowitz drills it out of the end zone. It'll be brought out to the 20-yard line for a first down for the Purdue University Boilermakers. Well, this is kind of a crushing loss. Kind of probably is an understatement for the Purdue Boilermakers in that they came in here expecting to be very much in this game, obviously in an underdog's role, but it's got to put a pretty good crunch on uh, their expectations as they must face Iowa next. Doug Downing has come in as the quarterback. He's a sophomore from Lafayette, Indiana. He'll be running the team now for Purdue. The pitch going back to Medlock. He's hemmed in and he's dropped for a loss back at the 30 at the 15 yard line. And here's another thing. If you want to throw out a few more roses, this Michigan defensive unit has dominated all afternoon. They're still in their banging bodies and putting the heat on. That's they true. Have just not they, haven't get, they haven't given up. But we might uh, say something quite positive about Jim Everett, even though he's had a very, very difficult and rough afternoon. Uh, Michigan fans at home and haven't seen him for the last time. We uh, really expect him to have a fine, fine professional football career. We told you at the outset that Gil Brandt, the outstanding scout from Dallas, uh, figures that uh, Everett will be the number one quarterback pick in this upcoming NFL draft. Pass incomplete intended for James Medlock. Went through his hands and dropped harmlessly. Well, if you take a look back at last season, you know what Everett did, and you know what he did to the Michigan Wolverines. The game ended up in a close score, 31 to 29, but that was really not the story of the ball game. As Purdue got out early, Wolverines tried to play some catch up, but could not come all the way back. Third down and 14. A shotgun on display as Downing is back to throw. Throws over the middle, incomplete at the 20-yard line. It was intended for Marty Scott, the tight end, and Todd Scholey wrapped him up as the ball arrived. And again, Purdue will be forced to give up the ball. It has been a disappointing afternoon for these men on the far side, the Purdue coaching staff. You know, yep. we just came up with another interesting uh, statistic. Michigan's defense has now kept Everett, Trudeau, and Chuck Long out of the end zone. No touchdown. This is Colazar on his own as Michigan had everybody up on the line of scrimmage. Carries back to the 44-yard line in Purdue territory. That is a figure that uh, is really impressive. Really You're impressive. talking about some much better than average quarterbacks with great talent, great skill, great numbers and the Wolverines shut them all down. Phil Webb is into the ball game now as Zerbrug continues at quarterback. Higgins and Campbell are also in. The rain is really starting to come down now and that will send a few more of the faithful to the exits. Perryman trying to get outside but no luck. 
racing in to wrap him up is Wembley. Got him around the knees and dropped him for a loss. Back at the 47-yard line. 10-28 left in this ball game. To give you an idea of what has happened here this afternoon, and the fans are starting to leave because of the downpour, Dennis Franklin was up on his tiptoes at the start of this telecast. He has now <laughs> taken his seat to watch the balance of it. <laughs> Zerbrug on the draw, and Webb carries to about the 46-yard line. Phil Webb, the sophomore from Romeo, Michigan. There is another plus in this, in that with everybody leaving earlier, we may be able to just drive right on out of here. That would be nice. <laughs> That's the biggest plus of all, maybe. Eric Campbell has gone into the ball game for the Wolverines. He is sent wide to the left as a wide receiver, and Higgins goes to the right as a split right end. That's the short side of the field. Webb and Perryman, the setbacks behind Zerbrug, who retreats to throw. Throws over the middle, and it's incomplete. Intended for Eric Campbell around the 35-yard line, but thrown low, and there's a flag down. The flag may come as a result of a late hit on Zerbrug, but uh, Eric Campbell was... I checked that uh, Higgins was wide open, I thought, on that particular play. That yeah, was, was Campbell, just, uh, Yeah, just a poorly thrown pass. That was uh, Campbell, who was the intended receiver. I, I thought it was Campbell. Eric Campbell was wide open, and the ball was just simply thrown short. As you see there, number five, Eric Campbell, was wide open, and Zerbro came up with a short play, short pass. The penalty moves it downfield and will give the Wolverines a first down at the Purdue 31-yard line. 9.23 left to be played in this ball game. Higgins comes wide to the left as the split left in. And it's Campbell, the wing to the right, in motion to the left. Zerbra gives to Perryman, sticks his head down, dives forward. Brought down by Williams in the vicinity of the 30-yard line. Michigan has 12 first downs in the second half. Eight of those came in the third quarter. Purdue has not recorded a first down this half. You can see here where the uh, Purdue players and uh, Ken Higgins there kind of go at it. Number 26, Woodson, Rod Woodson, a bit upset. Zerbrug pitches back to Webb, turns inside, is at the 25, and it's at the 24-yard line. The Wolverines lived on the aerial game in the opening half. They have shown a very impressive ground attack here in the second half. The first touchdown in the third quarter, an 80-yard march, all but, I believe, one play right. on the ground. On the ground. Campbell's back into the ball game for Michigan. He replaces Johnson as the wide receiver. Give you an, I'm sorry, Larry. Give you an idea of how Michigan has dominated the second half. They've had 35 plays to just 10 plays for Purdue in the second half. It's a great testimony to the vaunted Michigan defensive unit. It would have been very easy to kind of rest on the laurels of the first half, but they have not let up one bit in intensity. These fans don't let up either no. because Michigan is faced with a fourth and one leading 40 to nothing, and they actually want Michigan to go for it on fourth down. I and guess they will. And they will. Johnson has gone into the ball game, replacing Campbell. The ball is at the 22 and a half yard line. Johnson comes wide to the left. Zerbrug turns, gives to Webb. He's got the first down to the 20 yard line. Well, it's probably better that they do that. If you go kick three more up there, that's kind of rubbing salt into the wound, too. It's one of those decisions that has to be made. Sometimes it's a difficult one, sometimes it is not. I doubt that this was a difficult one. <laughs> well, we called it a first down, but now the official has spotted it at the 21-yard line, and that spot has drawn the wrath of the Wolverine fans that bring the chain in, but it is still a first down. Seven minutes, 18 seconds left in the game. It's 40 to nothing, Michigan leading Purdue. 
The boiler, uh, Boilermakers will have to regroup quickly. They face Iowa next week at West Lafayette, I believe. But regardless of where they play the Hawkeyes, they'll have their hands full. First and ten. Campbell is in motion to the left. Fumble in the backfield is recovered by Purdue. It was Anderson that recovered the football for the Boilermakers, and the Michigan drive has stalled at the 26. Anderson, the uh, five-year senior from Western Springs, Illinois, number 75, gets a gift here, and uh, he just saw the ball bounce away from Perryman and simply pounced on it, and Purdue will recover. There have been three turnovers. The two Boilermaker turnovers leading directly to Michigan scores. Wolverines had more, however. 40 to nothing. Doubting back to throw. Throwing long, and it is intercepted. But yes, he was inbound. Randall made the interception right on the sideline, and Michigan gets it right back at the Wolverine 35. You'll see here as Doug Downing, the replacement quarterback for Jim Everett, goes deep and he lets it fly, but uh, Michigan was in a prevent coverage, and number 10, Greg Randall, the senior out of uh, Chagrin Falls, Ohio, comes up with an excellent interception, Larry, keeps his feet in bounds, and uh, was a very impressive play for him. He is a senior having played behind Brad Cochran uh, most of his, his career here at Michigan. It's a big... Uh, big opportunity for him for him to be able to say he's accomplished some things uh, in the Michigan secondary. Indeed it is. The Wolverines have the ball back now at their own 35. We still have 647 left. This is Webb. He's got a hole. Breaks it in the three. The race is on. He's at the 30. The 20. He's going all the way. Touchdown Michigan. sophomore from Romeo Ramble 65 to Peter and it was just a great cut good blocking by the offensive line and this young man has sh shows uh, great potential because he gets to that sideline and says see you later I'm going for six just great speed good anticipation good cut outside and a big play for Phil Webb Moons will attempt the conversion for Michigan he kicks it up and through the Wolverines now lead 47 to nothing with 6.36 left in the ball game. Now the pass interception by Randall followed quickly by the sophomores Gallup for 65, Phil Webb. Here you'll see Phil Webb make the cut. You see the good blocking inside and Webb cuts to the outside, outruns number 23, Kennedy Wilson there. And once he turns on the afterburners, there was nobody to stop him and he comes up with a big, big play for Michigan. 65 yards, if I'm not mistaken, on the run, certainly and clearly the longest run uh, from scrimmage for a touchdown for Michigan thus far this season. Six minutes, 36 seconds left to be played in this game. The Wolverines lead it 47 to nothing. And we'll send a few more folks to the exits. We might be here by ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's been a long day. This fellow's had a lot of action receiving kickoffs today, Rob Woodson. Rick Sutkowitz teeing it up once again on the 40-yard line. Woodson standing on the near side as Sutkowitz delivers it long. This will go to the end zone, taken there by Woodson and downed. And will be brought out to the 20-yard line. Well, I'd like to remind you, coming up immediately following today's game, it'll be exciting harness racing action. 
as we go across the border to Windsor Raceway in Ontario for a complete recap of today's racing action on a Windsor night at the races. The executive producer of Pro-Am Sports is William Glenn, the senior producer of college football, Michael Smith. Today's game was produced by Jerry Hausfeld and directed by Jerry Hausfeld. Our associate producers were Jim Holly and Michael Andro. Our production coordinator, Christine Acchiavetti. And a special thanks to everybody involved with the production crew working on today's telecast. They've been working with less than ideal weather conditions, lighting particularly, and we feel that they've given you a very fine picture, and we appreciate their efforts. Very well said, Mr. Austin. Dennis, as you look ahead next week for Michigan playing at Minnesota, there, of course, we don't have the report on what has happened in the injury column, who's banged up, who may miss, who may return, that sort of thing, but this has got to give the Wolverines a bit of a boost in that their offense has been sort of sputtering throughout the season. It's been the one area, perhaps, that's incomplete, intended on the far side for Armentos. But the offense has sputtered and has not been consistent. Could this be a factor? Could this be something that could uh, develop? I, I really think that uh, this type of football game, Larry, is always important. What it does is it generates confidence uh, in the individuals, particularly on offense. But it really comes down to uh, whether or not when Michigan goes into these two big games, their final, their final two weeks, the uh, the uh, uh, offensive pattern, if they get into a pattern where they're not throwing the football, I think uh, they're asking for trouble. They've got to uh, be aggressive, stay aggressive, and take chances uh, in the big football game in order for this kind of result to happen. In other words, what you're really saying is less conservatism, more aggressive. In the big games. Mm -hmm. In the big games. Well, the Wolverines are forcing the freshman Ernie Trommeyer to punt again. And again, they've got everybody up on the line of scrimmage. Johnson is back on the Wolverine 42. Gets a good snap and gets this one away. Johnson's a flyer. He's at the 42. Up the middle, 50. Still on his feet. Down at the 45-yard line. Well, Michigan has it back again with six minutes, eight seconds remaining. Michigan shooting for its third shutout of the season. If it comes about, they will have reduced their per game average of points allowed to five and two thirds. That's 51 points in nine games. And that, sports fans, is good. Very, very good. good. Zerbrug gives off to his fullback, Webb, who went into the middle, and he got to about the 41-yard line. I beg your pardon, Webb is out of there now. And uh, we have met uh, Mr. Holloway. Looked like 46 when he went into the line. It's 48. A gain of four. It'll be second down and six. Holloway is a uh, sophomore out of Detroit, Michigan. DePore is high. And uh, he's getting an opportunity to uh, show some of his stuff. Zerbrug turns, makes the handoff, late pitch, a bad one. Holloway chases it down, can't find the handle, and he goes out of bounds at the 48-yard line. He had it, then dropped it. And then it was too late to move the ball forward. Lesnar was over there defending. He's in isolation at, on uh, Ernie Holloway. But that ball was really pitched in front of him. He really didn't have a chance to catch it, Larry. But uh, he does a nice job of following it and picking it up, avoiding the loss on the fumble. Possession remains the same. The down has gone to three, and the Wolverines have 13 yards to travel to pick up a first down. Zerbrug back to throw. Looking downfield is going long, intended for Higgins, but overthrown at the 17-yard line. So that'll bring up fourth down, and one of the least recognized men here this afternoon will show his uniform number on the field. It's Monty Robbins. Well, about all he has done this afternoon is hold for extra points. But in the punting department, he hasn't done much. He hasn't had the need. Only three times. This will be the fourth punt of the day for Monty Robbins. Wolverines just haven't had the kick. I don't think you'll hear him complain. No, not at all. 
Here's the boot. Griffin and Woodson are the deep man. It goes to the far side. That's taken by Griffin. He's at the 10, up the sidelines, and out of bounds he goes. And around the 17 or 18 yard line. We'll see when they mark it. Well, they say he stepped out of bounds at the 23, but there is a flag down, and it's going to be a clipping call against Purdue. Five minutes, nine seconds left in what has turned into a marathon here at Michigan Stadium this afternoon with the Wolverines putting a lot of points on the board. 47 of them. I don't think I've ever been here at Michigan Stadium with so much time left in a game with so few people in the stands. It is rather sparsely populated, isn't it? Yes. There's a man that had a big interception this afternoon, Randall. He's deployed wide to the left defensively as Purdue comes to the line of scrimmage. And we have still another quarterback now. This is Huber operating for Purdue. They get it to about the 10 yard line and that's it. McIntyre made the tackle. And you're probably hearing a few names this afternoon that you have not heard earlier this season. Or probably will not hear from the rest of the season either. Well, in view of the fact that uh, it's Minnesota and Ohio State looming on the horizon, you may be right. Second down and eight yards to go for the Boilers. Hayes comes wide to the right. Back to throw out into the flat. Caught by Grant. Dropped it. There have been a lot of passes that uh, have been catchable passes this afternoon that the receivers for Purdue have not been able to hang on to. Tony Grant, number 21, a fine fullback from Jeffersonville, Indiana. Sophomore coming out of the backfield there, number 21, Thank drops you. the ball, and you can see how frustrated he will be with those gloves on. It's hard to, hard to tell whether or not he could really feel the football. And it's really not that cold here. You don't wonder about those decisions, but there's somebody else to make. They had him trapped for a moment. There's a flag down, however. Huber ran it out of danger, but there's a flag down. And it's going to be a holding against Purdue. Well, this is one of these games where the game refuses to end. Yes. And where the <laughs> opposing team would really like to say, okay, guys, you win. Let's go yeah. home. <laughs> <laughs> the penalty has been declined to keep the down box turning. It brings up fourth down and uh, punting situation for Purdue. And this time it'll be Johnson to go back to field the punt for the Wolverines and uh, Ernie Schrommeyer will do the punting from his own three. Rushes on again, he gets this one away. Johnson takes it at the 49 yard line. And a skidding catch. And it'll be a first down for the Wolverines with four minutes, five seconds left in this one. Ryan has come into the ball game now for the Wolverines. He'll be playing the quarterback slot for Michigan. Russell Ryan, a junior from Oakland, Illinois. Correction, Reen. R-E-I-N is the way the name is spelled. Hand off to Webb. He's away again. He's at the 30 and down at the 29-yard line. Bill Webb with a 65-yard touchdown gallop earlier in this quarter, almost sprung another one. Williams made the tackle on him. He could get uh, over 100 yards here uh, in less than a quarter. Two big plays. He, in fact, has six carries for 98 yards. What an impressive afternoon for young Phil Webb. Clock running, 3.48 left in the ball game. Rain turns, fix. Well, he did give the handoff to Webb, and there wasn't anything there. A little bit of a mix-up. Drop for a loss by Wimberley. That may have been Holloway. It was Holloway that carried the ball. Well, forgive us if we uh, make a few missed calls here in the late stages of this one. 
Johnson back into the ball game, replacing Eric Campbell for the Wolverines. Lawson going wide to the right as Michigan comes to the line of scrimmage. The pitch coming back to Holloway, looking for a block, doesn't get it, and he has run out of bounds on the near side at the 33-yard line. Running him out was Wimberley, and uh, Vavrock was also there. Well, Holloway got a nice block from uh, from Phil Webb, but the penetration was just too much, and it uh, it forced Holloway actually to go out of bounds deep in his own backfield. Raiden also doubles as a man out of the bullpen for the University of Michigan baseball team. He's operating the club as a quarterback now. You take a look at what Webb has accomplished in a brief duration on the field, and the Wolverines' play has been stopped with flags over the field. Illegal procedure against Michigan, which you will see, of course, when you have you fellas on the field in this late stage of the ball game. Dave Chester is guilty of that particular penalty. I think number 64. That's Michigan's 12th penalty. 80 yards. That's a little heavy. It really is. And you don't expect a team to have that many penalties and still win 47 to nothing. But they've come really in situations where it didn't really matter. We've yeah. seen a lot of penalties in the second half, for instance, and the game was already a blowout. 28 zip at uh, halftime. Reed under the center, awaiting the snap. He's back to throw. Looks long, throws downfield. Higgins can't get it. Offensive, uh, offensive pass interference has been called against Purdue and the Wolverines. We'll pick up some yardage as a result. Higgins went flying through the air when he was belted before the ball arrived. Green throws the ball here to uh, his receiver, 31, Ken Higgins, and there's good coverage by Jeff Lee, number 18, but you can see he commits the uh, infraction. Lee is only a sophomore out of Los Angeles, California, but you can see he hits Higgins a little early, in fact, before the ball arrives, and that's why it's called for the penalty. The penalty moves the ball to the 23-yard line. It's an automatic first down for the Wolverines. With 2.57 left in the ball game, Michigan marching again, leading 47 to nothing. Johnson goes wide to the right as the wide receiver. The handoff to Webb, who spins inside the 20 to about the 19-yard line. 2.47 left to be played. Webb has now hit the century mark. 100 yards in the fourth quarter. Bill Webb, the sophomore from Romeo. There he is. Remember this afternoon, won't he? He certainly will. A lot of other people will remember it, too. Yeah, a I'm lot sure of them like to forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Campbell goes wide to the right. Green gives the web again. A loose attacker cuts back and he is upended at the 17 yard line. Tackle made by Lee for Purdue. Well, Webb getting a workout here in the uh, final quarter of this Big Ten Conference game. Phil Webb, eight rushes, 103 yards. A very impressive afternoon for young Phil Webb. Johnson goes wide to the right. Third down and five. This is Holloway. Cuts back beautifully across the 15. Very close to a first down around the 13-yard line. They'll spot it at the 13, and that is going to be very close. Close enough for a measurement. From here, it looks like it may be enough for a first down. We've got kind of a tough angle, so we'll have to wait for the chain to be brought in. Well, the unfortunate thing is that they have to call timeout to measure here. But other than that, I would definitely <laughs> feel that it's a first down. <laughs> There's only a minute 27 seconds it's left, short. my man. It's a little bit short. Giovanni Johnson has gone back into the ballgame. He's a senior from Detroit Northern, 
And Eric Campbell, the sophomore from Gary Roosevelt, has checked out as the wide receiver for Michigan. It'll be fourth down and inches for the first down at the 13-yard line in Purdue territory. Guarantee if our old producer wants to run the highlights of this game, we'll be here till tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to have to be selective today. You trying to tell him something? Yes, I hope he's <laughs> <gonna> tuned in. <laughs> Quarterback snake, and I don't know that he made it. Didn't need much, but I don't know that he even crossed the line of scrimmage. That's really all he needed to do is cross the line. He did not, and Purdue will take over. So we have a minute and eight seconds left. Michigan 47, Purdue nothing. And these are the some of the folks who helped make this one possible this afternoon. And again, we must give a lot of credit to the technical people who made the picture look good on a very, very dark afternoon. He's out across the 17 or 18 yard line, stacked up to, at about the 18. And I think Purdue's conceded the, the victory because they decided to run on that particular play instead of throwing you know so many times you'll see late in a football game where a team with the uh, a lopsided score will try for whatever reason to to uh, avoid the shutout or just get some points on the score for a moral victory but uh, Purdue apparently has decided that uh, this game is over and run the ball on first down 32 seconds left in the ball game and they run again that's brought out by Carter nope Medlock Rodney Carter I don't recall seeing him here in the second half. He was the big gun in the pass reception department. Had a very off first half, and we haven't seen him in the second. I think he may have played a couple of plays, uh, Larry, very early, but uh, maybe one or two, but he didn't do too much, that's for sure. Our spotter, Bob Burns, who has been busier than any one man really should be this afternoon, just pointed out that the Wolverines now have two men wearing number 15 on the field at the same time, which gives a little idea how deep Michigan has gone into the bench. Well, this game has come to a close at Ann Arbor, with the Wolverines recording a lopsided, but very impressive 47 to nothing shutout over the Purdue Boilermakers, who were really expected to come in here and put on uh, a bit of a show this afternoon. But the Tremendously strong and talented Michigan defensive unit just flat shut down Jim Everett and company, and it was no contest. I don't think that anybody that uh, had really looked at this game seriously felt that this would ever happen, this but kind of a score. There's just no way uh, anyone could have anticipated this kind of an outcome. Uh, even Bo uh, Schimbeckler, I'm sure, if he were asked if he would have anticipated this, I'm sure he would say no, uh, because... Um, Purdue does have a very, very fine football team. Uh, we told you that they were first uh, in the country in total offense coming in. We knew that they were a little uh, suspect on defense, but uh, we expected a, a much closer football game, but it just didn't happen. Well, we have a final score. It's Michigan 47, Purdue nothing. We'll be back with a wrap-up in just a moment. You're watching Pro-Am Sports.